Manscaped is here to ensure your post-quarantine body is ready for the wild. Don't be that guy at the beach with that bear rug on his chest. And if you have given yourself a pair of quarantine man tits, at least keep them nice and shaven. When you're using the lawnmower 3.0 in the shower because it's waterproof, and you get out of the shower, it's important to sometimes check these things because with the water running, sometimes you miss a few spots. Dad, we missed a spot! Manscaped is dedicated to helping you level up your full body grooming experience. They have forever changed the grooming game with the Perfect Package 3.0. Perfect Package Kit comes with the Lawnmower 3.0, which is waterproof, cordless, body trimmer with a ton of other liquid formations to help your grooming routine. This is the best trimmer on the market for those of you who, like us, need a regular chest shave, and it does include a ceramic blade to minimize those shaving accident so you don't cut your nuts. You can also adjust the settings to have the length that you want and that way it's so easy to stay on top of. Personally, I want the maximum length. I don't think that's how it works. Be sure to use their Crop Cleanser Body Wash to keep your body and skin feeling healthy and fresh. Inside the Perfect Package 3.0, you'll also find the Crop Preserver, which is a nice little nifty ball deodorant, which has uh, come in handy a number of times, especially, you know, the summer is uh, just coming to an end, but there's still a lot of hot days, Bush, and using that deodorant and that moisturizer has really been a big plus. Subscribe to the Perfect Package and get a new blade refill for your Lawnmower 3.0 delivered to your door every three months. This way you can master the blade. Be one with the blade. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. But for a limited time only, subscribers get two free gifts. The Shed Travel Bag of $39 value and the patented high performance reduced chafing Manscaped boxes. I'm wearing them right now and I can assure you they're anti-chafing all right. Bush had just modeled those for me before we started this video <laughs> as well and I can tell you they are flattering. That's not a sock ladies. The reason we're telling our audience today about this bush is of course you can get 20% off Manscaped's elite ball shaving products using the code TRUEFOOTY20. You get 20% off the products and you also get free shipping which is an absolute bargain. So if you do happen to make a purchase with Manscaped.com not only are you getting an elite product but you'd also be helping out the channel True Footy as well for a big 2021 AFL season. And that's actual elite not champion data elite. Thanks guys let's get into the podcast. All right, welcome to one of the truest football podcasts on YouTube. You will find maybe not the top truest, probably the top handful, would you say? Up there with Dylan Friends. That's yeah, well, he's definitely a lot better, but in terms of trueness, we're still up there. Absolutely. Yeah, well, we'll get there eventually. I'm joined once again for this 2021 edition of the podcast, uh, at least the 2021 season, by my Trevor Marmalade. <laughs> <laughs> You're the Trevor Marmalade to my Gary Lyon. How are you, Daniel? I'm going quite good, mate, yourself. Yeah, very well, very well. And today, back by popular demand, we've got uh, Lenny Fogliani. Thanks for having me again. Yeah, no worries, man. How are you uh, How are you feeling on the cusp of the 2021 season? Because it's officially March, so... Yeah, you bit know. of March madness. Exactly. Um, no, really looking forward to it. Um, it's been a long, uh, what's the saying, long gap between drinks, and yeah, hopefully yeah. we're in for an brilliant year of football true it's although to be fair it's been like the shortest off season we'll ever experience in our lives <laughs> yeah. but i don't know it, it really dragged on for me to yeah. be honest i think i think especially when you think about making content and then you go through the december january period yeah. nobody's watching your stuff it's like god yeah. it felt like a lifetime but uh yeah that no, was a short off season all things considered yep. um today we are for those who haven't worked out from the title of this podcast we're going to be doing our Season predictions or season preview. I'm going to call it predictions because uh, Papa needs some views, <laughs> and uh, you get more views by putting predictions in the title. But uh, yeah, we'll do a bit of everything today. Yep. I'm going to go through each of the 18 clubs uh, alphabetically as well, yep. and um, and we'll just talk a little bit about how we think they're placed going into the 2021 season, much like we did last year. I think that was our largest ever podcast last year. So mm. fingers crossed, um, we re reach similar heights this year <laughs> as well. Um, so get around us and like the uh, podcast if you're watching it on YouTube as well. Starting off, I guess, a good way to ask, to start this podcast is, Lenny, I'll ask you first, to what extent do you think we'll have a normal season with 22 rounds this year? I know it's an impossible question yeah. to ask, but like, what, how are you feeling with regard to that? Oh, I'm more in the optimistic camp. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're more likely to. Um, obviously, you know, we're touching wood and all that because last year was... Um, a very abnormal season if mm. that's what you want to call it um, but the way I think our country has handled COVID so far I think we're more likely to have 22 games um, but obviously it depends on how the 22 come about whether we're in hubs um, and even if it's just we're having like a Monday through to Friday yeah. sort of game period but true 
Yeah, I think we're more likely to get the 22 in this year. That'd be good. What did you uh, What did you think of last year having games every night of the week? Look, in some ways it's really good because I do love my football. Mm. But um, in other ways, there were some nights when I was like, I could actually go for a break and maybe just <laughs> listen just to some, you know, some like 360 or an on the couch. But look, if you have to do it, you have to do it. And let's be honest, it's not the worst thing to come to after a hard day's work and True. just sit on the couch, have a beer and watch the footy. Yeah, you're right. And it was a bit of a nightmare in terms of planning an AFL fantasy team, which oh, I yeah. tried to do last year, but it sucked. Yeah. What do you think, Bush? What are your thoughts on the going into the season? I think there'll be a degree of hubs, I think, in some mm. capacity. Maybe, like, maybe a lesser scale than last year, hopefully, realistically. But there will sort of probably be a degree of hubs because something will flare up for a few days here and there. Yeah. You probably see a few of these five-day lockdowns we've sort of seen the last few times something sort of flared up. Yeah. I think they're at the point where they've got the contact tracing and stuff pretty good. Mm. So when we do have incidents, they can be dealt with relatively quickly, but there will be minor disruption to footy, I reckon, as a result. Yeah. But I, I think they'll figure it out. I think the biggest threat is the WA border policy, which at the yeah. moment I think they need 28 days be- between COVID cases or transmission, at least, in Victoria. Yeah. which I think reset like less than a week ago to zero. So I think, I don't know where it sits yeah. in the moment. I think we're going all right, but it, there was a point where round one and two were threatened because obviously uh, yeah. Fremantle play in Victoria and then yeah. have to travel back for round two and the Eagles have to go to Perth. But we can't predict that stuff. So yeah. uh, there's no point analysing too much. We just have to wait and see. But um, yeah, I'm pretty open-minded as to the idea that we might have the seasons like fixtures completely changed and... Hubs. Yeah. I'm so, like we talked about it actually before. We we were a little bit surprised that they didn't sort of have hubs fixtured in in terms yeah. of maybe not like strict hubs, but say West Coast or Fremantle when they do their Melbourne trips, they play three or four away yeah. games in four weeks or whatever. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I thought that would have been you know sustainable kind of. And even but. roster team sort of through WA sort of have them back to back against Freo West Coast. Yeah. Yeah. You'd have well, you'd want to have no teams traveling to WA twice in the year, but. Because it would just be un- unnecessary no, travel. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Um, but we won't bag on too much about the negative stuff. Let's talk about the actual footy. Yep. Um, and we'll start at the top, the Adelaide Pros. Or you could, you could say we're starting at the bottom because they finished in the wooden spoon <laughs> last year. Yeah. Uh, their last year's spoon is obviously and finished the year quite strongly with uh, three big wins at the end of the year. Yep. Um, we got to see... My concern was with Adelaide last year was we the talent they drafted was so raw like you just you couldn't see that next group of players just yet yeah. whereas I think by the end of the season you had guys like Mackesy, uh Chase Jones yeah. sort of stood up as well um, and Lockie Scholl I think got yeah. the last Rising Star nomination of the year yeah. we know about Fogarty as well so you're starting to see a little bit of promise I yeah. think they needed a big draft they got Tilthorpe with pick two yeah. um, I think for me it's they're a tough one to peg I feel like you can start to see the players that are going to take them to the next level, but they still just need a lot of experience. Yeah. To what extent, I guess, Lenny, do you think, first of all, Adelaide can avoid the bottom four? Do you think it's pretty much a certainty they're going to finish pretty low? Yeah, I think certainty is the right word. I've got them finishing around 16th. Okay. I don't have them for the spoon. Um, one of my good mates, Billy Frampton, actually is in Adelaide's team now. True. Um, and we were having a bit of a chat last year about it. And basically what he was saying was, we're actually now starting to see the young talent come through. Mm. The guys you mentioned, like Schoenberg, Scholl, Chase Jones, Mackesy. Just added Hately as well. Yeah, Hately as well. So, like, they're they're definitely on the right path. And I think Matthew Nix is the man for them because he seems to be a more calming coach. I don't know if that's how you guys see him, but he seems to be that calming coach that doesn't get rolled up so easily. Um, but, yeah, look, for them, basically what I want them to do is just keep blooding the young players uh, to be more competitive in games so to stop I suppose the blowouts uh, as much and just to show start showing a consistent sustainable brand of football yeah yeah I agree well said Adelaide have got a strong culture of, and a long history of success they're not a team that really bottoms out too yeah. often so as we saw at the end of last year they sort of bobbed up and nearly avoided a wooden spoon um, yeah. so it'll be interesting to see how they respond this year Bush, what are your thoughts uh, on Adelaide? So we said 16th, you yeah. said 16th, I think probably about 17th is where I had them. What are you thinking? Similar ballpark, like they're obviously a young list. You guys have been talking about it before, but they're going to want to blood these sort of kids. They've got other kids they've taken. They're going to want to give them game time, develop them. And that'll come at the expense of veteran guys like your Walkers. Maybe even Sloan might start sort of catching a bit of whiff of that. And then other guys, like you've seen it with Bryce Gibbs the past few yeah. years yeah. with them. They've got the tendency to do it. Yeah. They're going to have to continue doing it to get better. So it's 
probably going to be a bit of sacrifice on the win losses with these yeah. young kids figuring stuff out. Yeah. But long term, it's good for them, I guess. Oh, and when we're talking about the kids uh, and the sacrifice Bush was saying, it's also for them finding the right mix for their team, like getting points of difference in the midfield. True. Because probably in the past you had the two Crouch brothers, you had Sloan, who were all similar midfielders. Now, unfortunately, I think. Is it Miller? Is that how you say it? Mm-hmm. I yep. think he's yeah. just done his knee, so I think yeah, he's yeah, after the oh, end. Right. Yeah. I thought he was going to be their biggest point of difference. Mm. And look, it's also like those guys in the mid 20s that now need to start taking control. And look, I know everyone's going to say I'm doing it just because he's one of my good mates, but I reckon Billy Frampton's in for a big year. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I think um, he's kicked four goals in the intra club, he kicked three All goals right. against the power. Um, yeah, I think he's due for a breakout year. Yeah, love that. What about uh, being the draft guru here, yes. uh, Riley Till- Tillthorpe? What did you, I guess, to what? How how ready do you think he is to play football this year? Do you think he'll get a crack? Oh, I certainly do. Um, by all reports, he absolutely dominated in the reserves game between the port between so between Port and Adelaide. So that was just like the young kids, essentially the under twenty threes game. Yeah. I think he kicked three goals, rocked a little bit. But the other thing that might be good for someone like Tillthorpe is. Maybe let him play a couple of reserve games first, just build up his confidence, and rather than do what Melbourne did to Jack Watts, where it was just throw him straight into a cauldron, and then you know he's um, maligned for much of his career. If you then like allow him just to steadily build his game, then he becomes an even better player. Yeah, yeah, well said. I agree. Yeah, being a ruckman, they're a little bit. They'd always take a bit longer. Yeah. Um, so there's no real need to to rush him in. But if again, they have the luxury of you know they're not competing for finals premiership. Yeah. So if he is ready, um, there's no real harm in exposing him. We'll move on to Brisbane, um, who, as we know, had a real disappointing end to the year. Um, it's a harsh word to use for a team that made a prelim and came top two and have done that well, come top two the last two years. But uh, in particular, I think. From where they fell from winning that first final against Richmond, if you recall, where yeah. at the time I thought that was one of the most like significant results of the season. Like they had just broken their hoodoo against Richmond, getting a home prelim and a home grand final. To stumble at the second last hurdle would have been really, really bitter for them. But um, I think it's fair to say that's not a real lack of quality that saw them crash out. It's probably just a bit of inexperience as well. Um, I guess oh, what else have they, they've just added Joe Danaher as well um, I guess first of all to what what effect do you think someone like Joe Danaher who we know is a prodigious talent do you think that's a big plus for them or, or how do you see that acquisition oh that's A plus 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 or plus with infinity amounts of it um, yeah. <laughs> you know it, it only helps Hipwood out because Hipwood then gets the second best defender yeah Rayner, if he's playing as that hybrid forward for them, he suddenly gets the third best defender and probably can start, I suppose, getting off the chain a little bit more. Um, You know, Danaher could kick 50, 60, Mm. potentially 70 goals in a year with how much he kicks it. You know, that midfield kicking it to him, he's going to love it. And it sounds like this is probably his first preseason that he's had where he's trained every session. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that as well. So um, I think the big question mark with him was always fitness, yeah. um, not so much talent. So yeah. if he gets an extended run at it, someone like Brisbane who have a pretty strong team in midfield, yeah. that, that might be a good environment for him. I've got a question for you, Bush. Yeah. If you were a coach, is there a better list that you'd want to take over than Brisbane right now? I've got a couple of teams here, but I've got GWS. They'd still be a pretty nice Interesting. team to take over. Like, okay. They've lost a lot of depth, but they've still got a very good core. And yep. their interstate buddies, actually, Gold Coast is one okay. would be a good team to take over. I think a lot of youthful talent. Would you rather take over Gold Coast than Brisbane, though? That's ballsy. <laughs> yeah, Probably. Maybe. I guess I, I know what you're saying, like the yeah. the potential of elite talent, but I think yeah. Brisbane are in that sweet spot yeah. where their elite talent is just kind of proven. Yeah. Like, you yeah. know, they've got Hugh McCluggage. Cam yeah. Rain is probably languishing a little bit behind where some of the other young yeah. talents are, but so many of those young guys have kind yeah. of already made a name for themselves as well. Um, Harris Andrews is an obvious yeah. one who's like 24 yeah. um, it's probably between them and Port for the most exciting young sure. list it's probably between those two clubs yes. in my opinion yeah I agree um, do you where do you see Brisbane this year is there any reason to think they're not going to finish pretty high uh, I think they'll finish top two yeah um, and yeah you look at basically their young players that are coming through the ranks that are almost all about to start breaking out so yeah look out for them they 
Oh, look, you can just see the future is very bright for them. I agree. Uh, your thoughts, Pusher? I think they'll drop a little bit, but they'll still make finals comfortably, still be a great team, obviously. Sure. But like, it's one of those things that like, other teams will get surpassed where they've gotten that sort of thing. Like, I don't see them perhaps growing as much as other teams. They've sort of Interesting. Yeah. Yep. But Def- I think they'll still be fine, like top six-ish. Okay. Cl- more close to the top four than top six, realistically. But, yeah, compared to like, their recent like really high finishes on the ladder couple of years ago and then even last year with COVID I don't think it'll be as high on the ladder in the home away yeah I, I think the arguments for them um, improving is still strong because mm. like we alluded to yeah. the talent is, is there um, I guess but the other thing is as well it's hard for teams to stay at the top all the time like there wouldn't how many teams have gone top two three years in a row in recent memory I really should have researched that before I asked that <laughs> so question good. but it's just come to me in the uh, moment like it's probably Richmond probably the last couple of years I'd say but they I mean, but, I mean sorry I mean, in terms of ladder position because oh, they finished right, third yeah, no, in the, yeah. Um, so I guess what I mean is like Brisbane in um I think even Brisbane and 0 one they were finishing like 5th or 6th. Right, yeah. Sorry, 4th. Fourth, 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 yeah, yeah. 4th yeah. had a lot. 4th, 4th, had yeah. a few 4th and stuff. <laughs> yeah, so the point being, yeah. oh, my point being is that it's hard to stay at the top for so long, even if you're yeah. that good. Um, yeah. They might have a little bit of adversity they're not used to. Um, but yeah. that being said, I'm still thinking top... Yeah. I think I said top 2. In fact... I think I, I could see them being lower down the ladder, but being in a better position to properly attack the finals. Weirdly, sure. as that sounds, like yeah, even though yeah. You're down the so ladder. if they're finishing fourth, yeah, that's what you're saying, sort of thing. Yeah. That sort of thing. I think, like, yeah, because a lot of these Hawthorns and stuff that you've seen yeah. have sustained success aren't necessarily finishing top two on the ladder. Yeah, I think if they dip, they'll come back up. Yeah, I, I don't think, 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 so well I don't think the dip will hurt them. Yeah, but I think they will dip, but they'll be fine for it in the finals. They'll yeah. still be as good as they could be. Yeah, if I th- not better. I think I have them as the team to beat at the moment okay that's that's how highly i rate them big call yeah it is a big call but i think if they drop it's more mental um yeah. than than talent as such we'll move on to carlton um and they were one of the biggest tra- uh, trade period winners it has to be said um if you were looking to identify some talent running off half back carlton yeah. went out and picked two of the better talents you could possibly recruit in <laughs> zach williams and uh, adam Sard. Um, who compliment that, uh, Sam Doherty, maybe allow him to free up a little bit, but also sort of replace Cade Simpson, who's been such a long-standing um, stalwart, elite talent, yeah, player for them for so long. Um, so they identified it a bit of a weakness and they've made it probably a strength now. Their running carry would be uh, up there with pretty much anyone. Um, and then obviously you're looking at that young, talented nucleus, in, particularly in the midfield around Cripps. Yeah. They're starting to mature. So there's a lot of reason. I know there's a lot of optimism at Carlton to... I think a lot of them are thinking finals or bust this year. Yeah. Um, I think um, most people within Carlton, from what yep. I've seen and watched on Blue Abroad's channel, they're thinking 13 wins minimum is what they, they're yeah. hoping for this year. They are a proud bunch over they're there. They're an optimistic Carlton. bunch. Yeah. They are, they are. Oh. But I just mean that's they feel like they're yeah. there. I guess do you, first of all, Lenny, think they're there? Oh, absolutely. If they don't play finals, I don't want to hear any excuses out of them. Yeah, right. They've got the talent now. They have keep t- they keep saying they've got the young talent. Um and at some point, you've just got to put the foot down and you look at what St Kilda did last year. They recruited, they played finals. Um, we know some Carlton uh, fans who um, oh, yeah. <laughs> keep telling us that Con's good. So, yeah, if they don't play finals, I don't want to hear the excuse anymore mm. that they're still building. Yeah, especially because I've got that bit more experience in now, like Saad and Williams. Williams would be in the midfield. He'll add that point of difference for Lenny catching yeah. up because he's a quick, like good yeah. kick, all that sort of stuff. But I think they've got those guys in like that age bracket where they're just going to have that leap year. Like you saw it with like Brayshaw and Chera of like last year. Well, maybe a bit the year before for Brayshaw, but where they guys in that like early twenties age range just sort of jump yeah. to like mm. that where they're like at that next level. There's just yeah. sort of about fifty games in. You sort of know. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So like your Paddy Dales, your yeah. Centerfields, your Kennedys. Exactly. Yeah, step. your Fishers, all those sort of dudes. Yeah, great DJ. And you're going to need Crips to run close to the Brownlow for them to yeah. make mm. finals, but that's probably one of the safer bets in terms of Carlton making finals. Mind you, he was down yeah, last year and they still played decent footy. They still improved. So, yeah. I mean, there's upside in just Paddy yeah. Cripps returning to form. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Um, if I had to throw one question mark at them, um, and I think there's a lot to be excited about, the fitness injury, sorry, the fitness questions around someone like a, a Charlie Kerno, who yep. um, I think is an important player for them structurally. Yeah. And that's probably the one thing they haven't proven at Carlton is the scoring power. Yeah. Um, if you've got like Levi Casbolt still clunking marks in that. <laughs> I know they got Harry Mackay as well, yeah. but Kerno is the one that's the talented one as yeah. far as I'm concerned. 
Harry Mackay is also talented, but I think Kerno. Kerno's your game breaker. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what I was alluding to. Yeah, and then um, I suppose you got your Jack Martins in there as well, who bobbed up a little bit last year and yeah. showed strong form. But not uh, other than someone like an Eddie Betts, who's well and truly in the twilight of his career. Proven goal kickers is the one thing they still need yeah. to sort of consolidate. So um, if they don't make finals, th- I'd probably be saying that's why. Yeah. Yeah. And. Look, if he wants to take his game to another level, he's already elite. Um, yeah. And probably, in my opinion, the best inside mid in the comp. But if Cripps suddenly starts kicking a goal a game, yeah. suddenly that then just makes him even more damaging. And True. I think uh, David King called it martinising, where it's like, does Cripps play forward more than yeah. he does in the midfield? So They might preserve his career because he's just yeah. been playing with a massive load on his shoulders, no yeah. homo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but he has been. I was actually watching his Dylan Friends potty today and he was just talking about mental exhaustion at some times yeah. because yeah. trying to lift his team a little yeah. bit. He yeah. didn't say that. I was just sitting there like, I'm <laughs> Jeff Yeah. Um, but yeah, if they want to preserve his career um, and they've, all, they've got the midfield talent, Crips yeah. forward kind of makes sense um, in the same yeah. way that Fife is doing that a little bit of Fremantle yeah. as well. Move on to Collingwood, uh, a team I know you're really bullish about. <laughs> well, actually, you'll be surprised. With, you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised with my take. That's yeah. the question. So, I mean, to, to set the backdrop, we know that they had a terrible PR nightmare over the... Well, we thought it was done at the trade period, but it really didn't end there. <laughs> it went all the way through to bloody January, I think, yeah. or, whatever, or February, or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, obviously, offloaded all those players in dramatic fashion, in particular yeah. Adam Trelaw. Fans were kind of hurt by the decision, for at least generalising. Um, and then, obviously... the comments made by Eddie Maguire, the whole external review into a, a racist culture at the club. Yeah. It's been an off-season for hell for, for Collingwood. When you said the historic and proud day. Yeah, well, you're talking about. yeah, yeah, that in particular. That um, was numpty moment, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that's Makes what I've Trevor Nisbet's golf incident look like nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor Nisbet's golf incident. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's, that's a funny one. But um, Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, is that enough, I guess... For we know that they're a talented list. Is that enough for us to lose confidence in Collingwood? Where do you see it, Lenny? Oh, I still think they'll play finals. Yeah, yeah, I'm still bullish on the list. I think Dacos will step up to replace Trelaw's position. He's been a great find yes, for them. I'm going to make a pretty uh, bold prediction. I think by the end of the year, uh, Dick Jordan Dago is going to be known as a top ten player in the competition. Wow. He'll be no, he'll be on the All Australian team on a half forward flank. He'll kick about forty five goals. And he'll be known as the best hybrid forward in the game. Or Ooh. he'll reclaim his position as best hybrid forward in the game. Is that including Dusty, though? Well, du- <laughs> I see Dusty more as a mid-forward. Fair enough. But okay. I see Dugowie more as a yeah. forward-mid. Okay. But, yeah, yeah. I, think, I think he's going to... I think when everyone last year was saying, oh, Petrarca's overtaken him, mm. you know, Petrarca's more talented, Dugowie's coming back from the hamstring tendon injury. Sure, yeah. I hope he... Sorry, can I swear on this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I hope he develops the fuck you attitude he had <laughs> yeah. in 2018, 2019. You know, when he, yeah. he almost won Collingwood, that granny against your boys. And then yeah. the way he played in 2019, I think we're going to see a massive year for Dugowie. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, he's uh, probably one of the most entertaining players to watch. Um, and I'm surprised you even had to ask about swearing, considering <laughs> I just said massive load on his shoulders. <laughs> you know, home over <laughs> um, yeah, personally, I think Collingwood's list is underrated a little bit in terms of there's been an overreaction to the semi-final loss because yeah. they got annihilated against Geelong. And it's very easy, and it's happened to so many teams um, in like the in terms of fan response, but when a team gets annihilated in their last game of the season, yeah. people think, oh, that's them done. That's them cooked. Well, you only have to look at Richmond, who got pumped by Sydney at the end of 2016. Yeah, yeah And then they that's ended true. up winning three of the next four flags. But the other thing, and this might be me grasping at straws, but at the end of 2017... Collingwood, like everyone was coming for Buckley, yep. everyone was coming for the list. They almost won the grand final mm. the next year. So you don't know, does Buckley just keep galvanizing the group and just going, it's us against them, mm. it's us against them. Everyone's hating us right now. Let's yeah. go out, let's prove them wrong. So they're probably the one club that I'm really interested in watching this year. Yeah, I agree. I, uh, I've been a sort of defender of Collingwood a little bit. I just think uh, they're too good a team not to do it. I actually have them in my top four. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, Bush, I haven't asked you at all because you've been <laughs> outspoken on Collingwood over the off-season. Well, I've what been outspoken thoughts? on them off-field. Like, Fair enough. Like, as much as I've criticised them off-field for that trade period, all the bullshit that's going on, they've still ultimately, like you guys have talked about, obviously got an extremely talented list. Like, the loss of Trelaw doesn't really mean that much to them and that's mm. most people losing Trelaw would just be bloody yeah. down on themselves for years. But Collingwood, 
they're fine. They've lost a rising star as well. They're fine. Trelaw missed heaps of footy the yeah. year they made the grand final. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think he missed like eight or nine. Weeks yeah, it's when he like did that. both his hammies. So I mean, Collingwood have dealt with losing players yeah. of this quality. But, but yeah, anyway, with like all that, they've like with all this shit that's going on. Like I think they've still got good personalities within that playing group. Like Pendlebury is still an outstanding captain and leader. They've still got some good personalities to sort of rally everyone and this yeah. will sort of galvanise and bring them together yeah. as a group I think Jeremy Howe coming back is yep. massive for them mm. yep he's got that leadership and ability to sort of galvanise everyone so I think they'll galvanise and rally behind all the shit that's gone wrong and probably put in a good year yep despite their off field being a complete piss take <laughs> the right. past few months let's be specific How where are they finishing roughly hmm I'm going to go fifth place Okay, that is very specific I, for you. I had them sixth. Okay, yep. so I had fourth, fifth, and sixth. Okay, so generally speaking, we're pretty buoyant on yeah, Collingwood. Yeah, I like that range. Yeah. yeah, cool. They did win a final last year, as people yeah. forget as well. Yeah. In uh, the vaunted Eagles Asylum Optus Stadium. Asylum. <laughs> <laughs> the vaunted <laughs> Eagles Asylum. <laughs> Everyone wearing straight jackets. <laughs> Jeez, it's Arkham Asylum is what I'm picturing. <laughs> God, all right. We'll move on to Essendon, another team talked about yeah. during the off-season for the right reasons. In ter- oh, actually, that's not true. Sorry, what I mean to say is they're, um, they're one of the most talked about for, I guess, a variety of reasons. In terms of the draft, they recruited heavy there. So yeah. the three top ten picks is exciting, but they also lost a lot of players, yeah. uh, notably Saad, Danaher, and Orazio Fantasia. Yeah. Um, personally, I think they were cooked by injury last year and probably didn't make a good account of themselves. On top of that, they're also an inconsistent side. So, yeah. um, you know, it's hard to really get a good handle on where they're at. Yeah. I guess a good way to start the question is to what extent will they feel the loss of the three players they lost, Lee? Oh, I- they're massive losses. Um, like I know all of them struggled to get on the park, at, apart from Saad sure. uh, at recent times, but I think there's a bigger loss for them. It sounds like Michael Hurley's going to miss a lot of this year with... Good point. Is it a liver infection? Is that uh, I got that wrong? Yeah, not too sure. It's, to I know it's an infection of sorts, but yeah. and I think he said it in the 2008 draft or 2010 one, I've forgotten which draft, but... Eight. Yeah. Mm, yeah, eight, eight, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like how he's become like a real fine for them I think you know you've got McGovern and Brands who have probably been the best key defenders of the Monero and he's probably not far behind them so mm. I think him out's probably a more massive loss than say Fantasia yeah. or um, Danaher yeah yeah fair enough interesting um yeah, Saad as well is another one who finished pretty high in their best and fairest and was a, a contributor. They didn't really get much out of Danaher over the last three years. That's um, why I'm sort of seeing him as not as big yeah. a loss because if he was yeah. playing like every game and kicking you know, 55 goals a year, mm. you'd just be going, oh, shit. But yeah, yeah, that's pretty much the position I took with it. I don't think they'll feel Danaher and Fantasia too much. Like They both missed too much footy for him. They've sort of yeah. used to game planning for with being without them sort of thing, so I think they can yeah. adjust. Though, I've viable key forward would be great for us like, yep. at well, the moment they're key forward they've got young key forward yeah. stocks but they've sort of got Stringer as a bit of a more medium key Hot, you're more, he's more there yeah. he's more of a go type Martin exactly yeah. hybrid forward yes. exactly yeah. sure. he's more of that sort of dude but like a decent key forward would be Schmick on this team mm. yeah I, uh, I, it's a tough one with Essendon I really don't want to sit on the fence but um, I, I see both sides of it. People saying, you know, they're entering a rebuild now. Yeah. And my view has been they've actually been in a rebuild since the Asada thing, really. When yeah. Andrew McGrath went pick one, they've been adding talent to their list yeah. and giving the, those players opportunity. And losing the three players that we talked about doesn't mean that they need to rescale their list completely. Like, yeah. I think the, the some of the building blocks are there. Yeah. Um, and they've also just recruited Jai Caldwell, who's a couple yeah. of years into his development as well. So, um Probably yeah. going to get an opportunity there. Even Peter Wright, that's joined them from true. Gold yeah. Coast. Fair point. Yes, that's true. Um, kind of half back, replace the side. So they've done really good recruiting work, but it's yeah. probably they probably want one more year where you know guys like Nick Cox, Harrison Jones, Perkins, Draper, and Zach Reid all suddenly start to get better. Yeah. So, look, I've got them missing finals this year, um, but you know, twenty twenty two, they could be coming right back into finals. Yes. I think I'll say that they will do a typical Essendon season. They'll, they'll be better than people expect for most of the year. They'll languish around the eighth spot. Yeah. And then in the final month of the year, turn to shit like they always do. Yeah. And they'll fall back to 13th. But I don't think it's as dire as what people are thinking. What, what, are, what are you saying? Yeah, I've, like with the rebuild thing, I kind of agree with the thing that's already kind of hit them. Like they just haven't had as much list turnover as you would typically expect from a rebuilding team, I think. like Fair enough. They've just filled the team with like youth, but not really turned over as much as those older sort of 
list cloggery types as you'd expect. Okay. But they've had some good recent signings. But I'd expect a few more guys out in with some more youth of recruitment for them to be out of a rebuild. Mm. Yeah, fair enough. I feel like they're still sort of in that line. Yeah. Okay. So we're roughly on the ladder. Like I said, 13th around that range. Yeah. I've got them around 15th. Oh, really? That's okay. Big, but yeah. that's because I've been saying that. I can see 14 or 15 teams that could play finals this year. Yeah, so, fair enough. Yeah. No, I was hard. thinking like that 11 e 15 e range. Yeah. <laughs> 11 e 15 e range. <laughs> 11 e 15 Yeah, right. A series of unfortunate events. <laughs> um, cool. All right. We'll move on to your boys, Fremantle. Um, you. There is a lot of optimism, it seems, amongst Fremantle fans. I remember I was watching our party last year and you were way more negative than I was on Fremantle. Yeah. You were saying spoon contender. And I was like, I don't think it's quite that bad. Fast forward to 12 months later, um, I was going to say, they've just beaten West Coast in the preseason, but to be honest, they beat us every preseason. That's a given. Like, Fremantle, yeah. like this is the given I've noticed in like Western Australia. Every year, Fremantle win the preseason <laughs> games. Derby against West Coast, and then there's always someone in the media going, yeah, Fremantle are going to finish higher yeah. on the ladder from West Coast this year. Yeah. This year, it was Xavier Ellis. Oh, was he? Yeah. yeah, right, interesting. At least he's There's not always someone fine. with that hot take every year in the WA sports media. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this year is a lot more justifiable than it was last year. Yeah. Um, Because you guys beat us by a point, I think, in the last preseason. Um, I guess without getting into Eagles versus Dockers. We beat you by 100 the year you won the flag, didn't we? Yeah, 10 goals. Let's not exaggerate. (laughs) (laughs) It felt like 100 points because Robert Walls the next day was like, Eagles are going to win the spoon and the Dockers are going to play finals. Yeah. Boy, was that the worst prediction of all time. (laughs) That was quite literally, yeah. Um, So... I guess for Fremantle, look, we saw a massive step in the second half of the year, I thought, yeah. in terms of like the younger guys stepping up and yeah. shouldering more of the load, in particular, uh, Chero Brayshaw, and even Sarong, his first yeah. season, was carrying a lot of midfield load, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going to find a new phrase. Um, <laughs> given up on the Hogan experiment, so goal scoring power is still a bit of a concern, even though Mickey yeah. Walters is still running around there. I think yeah. um, and you got Sam Sturt coming through. Yeah. Who I, I like Tavenar the look had a big year last year, so True. we're hoping he maintains that form. For sure. But even still, that's probably the weakness. But yeah. I guess, first of all, how do you feel about Justin Longmuir so far in the role? I'll start with you, Lenny. Oh, I think he's done a fantastic job. Um, you know, I actually don't have them playing finals this year. Yep. I think next year's the year. I don't know about you, Bush. On the fence. <laughs> um, but look, I think... I just want to see how they start the year, how their defence stacks up, and a bit about their forward line. But also I want to see the kids like Hayden Young becoming a weapon, mm. Liam Henry taking over Michael or taking predator taking pressure off Michael Walters. Sure. Um, you've got Sarong, hopefully he doesn't have the second year blues. Mm. Sturt, Bewley, Lena Thomas, who most people might not know. Um, when he went through the draft, I'm gonna say two years ago, he was probably the best kick in the draft, so Hopefully we can get him into some games. Um, and even someone like Connor Blakely, just to now start really start cementing his spot as the inside ball. Because if he starts to become that inside ball that he's probably teased us for so long, it then really does allow Fife to play forward. And then it's as David King said, you're martinising Fife. Mm, true. Yeah, exactly right. What about yourself, Bush? How are you feeling? Like even last year when I was down and I sort of said, yeah, give him the year, sort of see how it goes. Like I don't think we'll be that good last year. Like, but sort of see where it goes but like it was very promising I'd say like the last year like I saw the change to like our offense what I'd been screaming for for years like just seeing the guys flow the more dynamic action into the forward line good kicking like yeah. kick rather than the Ross sort of pressure style yeah. but like we still maintain that elite level defense that Ross had instilled in the team which was like his yeah. whole me force like Justin sort of modernised it a bit, but by and yeah. large he's kept an elite great defense but yeah. the guys now sort of had that offense to roll off as well and I think now the guys, second year of like learning like this more complex offensive style, yeah. they'll have another year of knowing that. Like even the injured guys have had a year of like learning it, watching tape, that sort of stuff. So it should look even more crisp this year. Like we should be even more efficient, I think. Well, and sometimes the best defense is your offense because yeah. if you look at Hawthorne during 2012 to 2015, like the way they just defended was they always had the ball, they always found mm. their targets, and you can really see that with the game plan that Longmuir's. Uh, instilled at Freo like in previous years you probably just got guys that were just banging it on the boat trying to yeah. and if something came on whereas now like you know when you've got Hayden Young Wilson Sarong who I think is a pretty good kick they're all starting to really hit the 45s and hit those damaging kicks yeah. here's a little quick question who's the better kick second year Lucky Neal or 
Caleb Sarong going into his second year. Better kick or better player? Better kick. Okay. Better kick. Oh. I actually can't really remember. Lockie yeah, was a second year player. So that's why so I was so asking you. I'm like, yeah, if anyone would know, this will be right. Yeah. No, that one did me. I had no yeah. idea. <laughs> I couldn't <laughs> tell you what the second year Lockie Neal was doing. Was that he would have been playing in the grand final or maybe his third year? Yeah, I think that was. It was like a sub or something, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. He was like eleven or ten or something. He's drafted year. years old. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I guess to um, I, I agree. I think Fremantle will push for finals. I think what's held them back as much as anything that people in the East might not realise is availability at times. Like, you'll yeah. have Alex Pierce playing the form of his life and then it'll just go down with a long-term injury and then Joel Hamlin will be like, oh, I would like to be injured too, please. <laughs> and then you just have to make this makeshift backline. And then Griff Lowe goes down. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that has happened at times to Fremantle. And while they they are, no doubt, or have been in a rebuild, um, they've probably looked worse at times than they actually are. So I think yeah. as soon as that comes, that you, yeah. as soon as you guys get a bit of luck, I do think you're around the mark for the eight. Yeah. I think I have you guys in my prediction pushing finals most of the year and then just dropping away. Yeah. Probably like Carlton. Um, it's a good comparison, Fremantle and Carlton, actually, yeah. in terms of I think mm-hmm. people in free, like WA will say Fremantle and people over East will be like Carlton, definitely. But I think similarly, both teams probably just lack the scoring power. Yeah. So that's why I have Fremantle missing the finals. If you have those two teams grouped together, would you say one of them makes finals? I'd say uh, Carlton. Yeah. I'm going Carlton over Freer. You can go yeah. the safe option, just say either one of them. That sort of. No. Yeah. yeah. I had Carlton finishing higher. Oh. Yeah. I think maybe just. That's a tough one, though. I yeah. think it's. I could see Fremantle. I could see them 9 10 in it, those two. Oh, look, yeah. Freer could, and, but I think at the stages where they're at, you've got Carlton who really don't have any more excuses anymore in the mm. bank, whereas Freer mm. probably still have. We still have to learn a game. Freer. Bit of credit. Yeah. New bit coach. Credit. Newish yeah, coach. So, so I think. That's why I think Colton have to play finals and Ferris more prime for a 2022 tilt. Yeah. Okay. That's a good way to put it. So we all have three now slightly missing finals. Yeah. 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 Okay. I think that's fair. Uh, but then again, there's a surprising finals aspirant every single year, and I feel like Fremantle is a candidate to be in that group. Yeah. But I, yeah. Who's we'll kicking see. the snags, we reckon? Exactly. Well, you got Walters. I think Sturt might come in and become best 22. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if he's going to kick 50 goals. I doubt yeah. it. But oh, if he kicks, you know, 20, 30, that's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Even if 20. If you have got kicking 45 50, you'd yeah. have. Walters would kick his what 35 40 yeah. Sturt 25 30 yeah I've sort of the other guys because I sort of had hopefully more Walters and Fife because I'm hoping like that engine room of like your Sarong Chera Brayshaw is really churning you can send Fife forward so I'm hoping to get more goals from like Walters and Fife I've got my second dot point here is hopefully Crab Daddy Tabs can use a healthy preseason to build on the year he came out of his shell oh. which was last season <laughs> Good pun. <laughs> and then I've also got Lobster and Tracy. Tracy, however you pronounce it, as promising tolls. Liam Henry's yeah. going to go down there, so hopefully he can start weaponizing magic. Weaponize him, yeah. And then you'll get a combo of guys like Schultz, Switkowski, Sturt, Croden bobbing up in individual games here and there. You might not get a big season out of them individually, but those guys will bob up in games. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Cool. All right. I like it. We'll move on to Geelong Cats. Um, and it's, it's always frustrating, I guess, when a team finishes in the grand final, uh, nearly wins the flag, and then by far and away has the most productive offseason <laughs> as well. Um, but Geelong, obviously, very narrow runners-up. Lost the game by five goals in the grand final, but it was clearly a much closer game than that. It was, oh, just, it was really only the last couple of minutes when Richmond yeah, pulled it on. And Dusty, Dusty kicks the greatest <laughs> grand final goal I've seen. Yeah, exactly. In fact, probably the greatest grand final individual performance I yeah. reckon I've seen. Interesting, yeah, yeah. So unfortunately for Geelong, they just ran into a rampant Richmond and yep. a more determined Dusty. But. Yep, exactly right. Um, but to, to, comp- to consolidate what they've had, they've um, added... Uh, Jeremy Cameron yep. so they now have the last two Coleman medalists in yep. their forward line the Coleman combo yeah and they love recruiting their 30 year olds and Isaac Smith and Sean Higgins who are both still playing very good football as well yep. um, there's a clear intention to and I think Chris Scott's even said this they want to win the flag with the group they have now there's no yep. point building for the future they're, yep. they're all in for the here and now yeah um I guess what is the biggest threat to Geelong is a good question because I think we can all agree in terms of starting 22 talent yeah this is arguably the best 22 yeah. now that they've ever assembled yeah so what's what's going to stop them winning the flag this year Lenny uh, as corny as it probably sounds injuries no. probably especially also because they're older boys now so they're probably going to have to preserve them in their management um, and this is just my opinion I still think they've got to beat Richmond yeah, I think Richmond's the team to beat. So, but look, Geelong could just—it could almost be like the Sydney West Coast rivalry in mm. 05, 06 that happens. But 
yeah, they're probably the two main ones, I would say, for Geelong not winning the flag. But there's a lot of reasons for them to win it. Yeah, well yeah. said. Move In terms of my biggest threats for flag, I've got two... Do- two the biggest threat for flag, I've got two dot points here. The first one says Richmond, obviously. It's mm. sort of a, yeah. Yeah, fair call. But then I've also got a few teams where on their day, like if everything's going good for them, they could do in... Yeah, Geelong, yeah. you know, do no, or die. Like on their day, points. I think the Pies could do them. On their day, West Coast could do them. On their day, Port and Brizzy could also do them as well, I think, in like a do or die situation. Mm. But obviously on paper and everything, you'd roll with Geelong. Sure. Yeah. But those teams on their day could beat them. I'll throw up another one. Um, we've seen, not just with them, but with them in the past as well, but when teams add elite talent, they don't always optimise it correctly. I know this is an observation you made when they recruited Gary Ablett and... Uh, a couple of years ago, and I think Even it was Eagles it? with Tim Kelly. Yeah, exactly. If it might have been twenty eighteen or might have, well, when did they recruit Ablett? Going into eighteen. Yeah, going yeah, I think it was going eighteen, and that was the year they went out first year of the finals, and we were like, wow, this Geelong team had the whole. Trinity. It was the back to back straight sets, wasn't it? And then they got Gablet, was it? No, they didn't go straight sets in seventeen. It doesn't matter. They they went out in first week against yeah. Melbourne uh, yeah. in eighteen. Um, anyway, long story short. Sometimes recruiting all the best players and plonking them in particular in the same forward line yep. doesn't mean more goals. You yeah. suddenly have Hawkins yeah. and Cameron now yeah. both competing to be the number one yeah. forward. They might not work that out straight away. Yeah. So I think that's a, it's such a silly argument to make against Geelong. I'm just saying yeah. that might be something that they yeah. need to consider. I think some of these sums aren't greater than the sum of their parts. Sort of thing. Yes, some of them are yeah. negative. Yeah. And I think... Geelong in the past have been very good at working that out on the fly. Like sure. even when Danger joined them, it's like True. he knew how to fit in straight away. So, and it's not like they've recruited a full forward to take over Hawkins. I see Cameron Moore as a centre half forward, and the Tomahawk as your full forward. Sure, so yeah. That probably also does help because yep. if they recruited, um, say like a Tabner, um, yeah, or sorry, a or Josh, a Ke- or pro- yeah, prime yeah. Josh Kennedy. Mm. If he was there, then suddenly it's who's taking full forward, who's yeah, taking centre half yeah. forward. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah I think they got a good centre half forward Gary Rowan's still playing good footy um, but for them as well it's probably guys like Parfit Radicalia Narkel mm. and Jordy Clark to take the next step sure Grand yeah. man. still a lot of upside in those four names yeah. you named as well it's a big forward line actually when you sort of name some of those names like Gary Rowan's over 190 Danger's going to be playing some forward time he's over 190 the two big keys obviously you're right lucky they have two good yeah. small forwards in Myers and Dowhouse though two yeah. pretty good grand yeah. level players so yeah. I think yeah the mix is still pretty good there even with yeah. Ablett out but plus yeah. Tommy Atkins is a good little pressure forward for yeah. them mm. yeah that's true um, so I guess where are we fitting Geelong in this year? I think I had them. I did my related prediction the other day, but I can't remember off the top of my head exactly where. I think I had them around third or fourth, certainly in the yeah. top four. Yeah. So um, yeah. Is that what you? They'll make. The, they'll make the prelim. Yeah, I, yeah. I was going to say. I think I'm a prelim is a good prediction. Yeah. Prelim, yeah. Top, yeah. Prelim. top three prelim. Yeah. Sort of Absolutely yeah. no surprises if they take home the flag this year, but mm. um, yeah, they'll be around the mark. The Gold Coast Suns. Uh, now they bounced up a lot this year and. I wonder if arguably this is the most exciting time it's ever been to a Gold Coast fan. You know, like yeah. they never really... Ba- I mean, maybe 2014, I think, when Ablett was playing good yeah. footy. I, I think comfortably, because like even when you had something like those early days, we had a lot of big drafts where you got in a lot of names. Like they hadn't earned the optimism. This group sort of earned that optimism with like their grit and determination like the last couple of years. Like yeah. even two years ago, they had some really close competitive games. Like they were winning ugly and winning close, but they were still like putting out good effort and everything. So like this group sort of earned that sort of excitement and respect from Gold Coast supporters, I think. Yeah, there's what we've seen in the last two years is they've started the seasons well and then they've gotten cooked and right. um, and not ran out the entire year. And last year in particular... I think last year hurt when Roll went down because yeah, it was like they were all feeding off the Roll. Yeah, the train. hype. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, look, he comes back into that team and suddenly they're just players that just lift other players. Mm. And I think he's one of those guys. True. They're, they've got... They're, uh, certainly more watchable than I think they've ever been. Now yeah. neutrals want to tune in to see how Manny Rail's playing, which yeah. is a big plus. And then you got Isaac Rankin, okay. another yeah. hype player. Yeah. Noah um, Anderson, Benny yeah. King. Look, I know this is another big call, but I reckon they could finish higher than GWS. Wow. Ooh, I, that I is a big call. call. I, I like that. Good. That's stinky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, interesting. I think for me, what will count them against count against them this year is just that they haven't got that battle hardenedness yeah. yet. So yeah. last year what worked for them kind of was that it was a shorter season, shorter yeah. quarters. Yeah. Um, now, I mean, obviously, they're a little bit more experienced going into next year, but then with 22 rounds, travel. That was another thing yeah. they didn't have to do in 2020 yeah. much. They didn't travel that much. Um, so, to some extent, they had things go their way. Yeah. Uh, and then also, that you're just going to have to pump games into Anderson, your yeah. Hollands, and stuff like that as well. So, yeah, I, I guess I'm expecting a similar year for Gold Coast this year. Probably 
slight linear improvement. Yep. But um, ultimately, I think they're still a few years off finals. Yeah. Is that what you would agree I've with? I've got them around 12, same with GWS. Sure. Like, I've pretty much got them next to each other. So yeah. that's why when I said they could, yeah, yeah, okay. they also could fall down the bottom and GWS play finals and make me look silly. But yeah, yeah. look, I think this is probably one of the years that I'm looking at, or the first year I'm looking at it, I'm going... This mm. is gold because could be finishing higher. But wow. in saying yeah. that, I'm going to agree with Lenny. Get a fifth mortgage on my house and put it on Gold Coast finishing higher than GWS. <laughs> wow. <laughs> kids, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The first four mortgages were also bad bets, kids. So definitely don't do it. <laughs> That's it. Um, so we saw Matty Rao also. Uh, was he leading the Brownlow ever? I don't recall if he was leading it, but he gave cool, maybe. Might have been been equal on nine votes or whatever. I think. I'm not sure if he was outright leading, but he was up there. I think he was equal with like nine at some stage before he got injured. Do do we genuinely think he's a chance to actually win it? Oh, yeah. I mean, mean, mean this year. Yeah, I I think. Like, I'm I'm not saying put the house on it, do all that, (laughs) and take We're not saying that. Another mortgage. (laughs) Another one. (laughs) Another Um, one. (laughs) But, yeah, look, he could certainly finish top five, and depending upon results as well. Mm. But some of the football they were playing last year was really oh, exciting, yeah. like really exciting. So, um, look, he could be. I'm not saying he will, but, mm. yeah, he could finish top five. Yep. Yeah, fair enough. What do you th- In terms of Rallo, I'd definitely say it's a smoky, especially if Gold Coast do, in fact, make finals. Because like, for the possibility of Gold Coast making finals, I was sort of interested to see who, like, the guys who win the spots in their best 22 and, like, that bottom six ended up being. Because I've sort of got probably 12, 15 guys fighting for, like, that bottom six sort of spot mm. on their, like, best 22. So I'd be interested to see who wins those spots, who offers the most upside points of difference, that sort of stuff. But I think if everything goes right for them, they do get close to finals. Rowley's definitely a good shot for the Rowley. Like. The Rowley, yeah. The Rowley. Like the Red Bull. <laughs> we, uh, yeah, that's a good one, actually. Um, we should talk about the other expansion club that you just alluded to. Yep. Um, we did see a very down year from GWS. We talked yeah. about it in the preseason. I think we were like, oh, how will they respond for getting belted yeah. in the grand final? Because historically, that uh, doesn't bode well for teams. They don't yeah. come back well. And we saw it was a, a year from hell. I don't know if... Uh, what did they finish, like 12th or something? I yeah. think that was... Probably not indicative of that how good they are personally because yeah. I think they fell away really poorly. That the team that played St Kilda in that final round where they got annihilated, that was a team playing for nothing. And I yeah. just think they probably didn't make a good account of themselves. Um, had the injuries in a turmoil. Yeah. Stephen Cornelio lost form. Who actually got yeah. dropped as well. Yeah. So not a happy captain camp. Getting dropped. Yeah. Captain not a, the captain. Not a happy camp. And also they're losing Jeremy Cameron and Zach Williams from that team. That's what. That's my concern. Is sure. That they're now losing their star players, and I'm wondering who the depth players are. Do yeah. They step up because I'm. I tried to look at it, and the only ones I could think up were Isaac Cumming and kind of Iden. But mm. I mean, like they're still they've got some great players, but I think Whitfield's out now with another liver infection or something. Oh, wow. So suddenly it's I'm kind of going. It depends on injuries. Like yeah, if they does. get decimated by injuries, well, mm. they're not going to be good. But if they've got a healthy list, they could dominate. But I'm going to pose a question to you, Jesse. Oh dear. Now, mm. now if GWS miss finals, yeah. Do the Jungle Drum start beating for Ross Lyon to come in as coach? <laughs> That's a tough one. <laughs> Do you think... Oh, I'm gonna, I don't, don't want to hit you back with a question, but I wonder <laughs> if Ross Lyon has just damaged his reputation too much to be actually be come back as a coach. Is that what you meant, as a head coach? Yeah, senior head coach. coach. I, well, uh, the first part of that question is Leon Cameron go. Yeah. Um, I think he'd be close. Yeah. I don't think he'd immediately get sacked. It depends how poorly they miss the finals. Yeah. So let's say they finish similar again. Um, certainly, his pressure, the pressure on him will be rife. Yeah. Like he yeah. might not last the entire following season. Yeah. Ross Lyon would be a suitable coach, I think, for a team that's established. And I personally think GWS are fairly established. I know, like the depth has obviously been decimated a little bit, but I think in terms of the top level talent they've got, um, yeah. and not to mention all the you know talent the they've added. They got. The yeah, thing exactly. is with Ross as well. He can turn anything like into viable death. He'll just teach him his gritty like yeah. lock in style. Like you can turn like guys who have no skills who aren't that good in like yeah. good Ross line system players if they've got the effort and determination sort of thing. Yeah, I think. I think Ross Lyon is a proven, really quality coach. Yeah. I think he would be suited to a team that liked GWS, and I think he could turn them good. But I don't know if he's a the sort of, if I was a fan, the sort of person I would want coaching my team. He's just a yeah. bit of a flog. <laughs> <laughs> Savage! I was going to say know. dinosaur myself. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. That's just my personal opinion. What's your opinion? Do you think Lyon would be a good suit? 
Yeah, I think so. I think he, as Bush alluded to, he'd be getting them defensively sound because that's yeah. probably been the knock on GWS that they're so offensively good, but yeah. do they have the work ethic? Um, I'm mainly bringing that question up because David King on SEM basically said if there's a coach to go, does Ross replace them? And Ross is probably the man most likely. So, mm. And I've got a bit of pressure on Leon. You know, they missed finals, got belted in the granny, Stephen Cornelio dropped, yep. depth players leaving. Is yeah, it their last have they gone past their premiership window? Possibly. I'm gonna back him in. I think they will if they don't play finals this year, I think they'll play finals the following year. So twenty twenty two, you reckon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they'll probably this is where I don't remember what I put in my ladder prediction the other day, but I should have should have uh, memorized that before I did this. But I think I had them around the mark for eighth, but just missing out. Yeah. Um, and then bouncing back up. I think goals is going to be the issue. I don't yeah. really trust the recruit of Jesse Hogan. You'd be silly yeah. to really back Jesse yeah. Hogan in just Living yet. with Shane Mumford. Yeah, Jake Riccardi and then Finn Layson. Uh, there's a lot of pressure on those boys suddenly. Yeah. Um, Finn Layson's never really been the number one man in the forward line, so yeah. that's and the question. And Hillberg's not really a number one forward either. Yeah, so. that's right. So Toby Green's going to have to kick a disproportionate amount of goals yeah, and yeah that's probably and, the question but then you also need green in the midfield to yeah. get the ball get green. it for <laughs> some of Mark's own ball and snap through the Paddy Cripp game style <laughs> yeah. um, what about yourself Bush what do you think well because we sort of had the question is like do you think they're still top qu- top four quality side was the way we sort of framed it like yeah. I'd say for them that used to just be a certainly based on just like their t- list talent mm-hmm. now they've sort of lost a bit too much of that talent they sort of had three four years ago they've bled out a lot of guys they've still got a lot of talent but mm. Ultimately, they need to be switched on. Everything needs to go right for them to be in that position, whereas it was sort of almost sort of gifted to them based on their sheer depth of talent a few years ago. Now they've sort of going to have to earn that top four yeah. position rather than just sort of rely on the talent a bit and work for it, obviously. But, you know, I sort of... Yeah. Yeah. So I'm guessing by your response to Lenny's Gold Coast High in GWS thing, you're going to say no finals for the Giants? Yeah, no finals for the Giants. Okay, yeah. Uh, but yeah. my pass fail for Cameron was making finals. So Interesting. So you think if they finish 10th, he's gone? I'd be seriously considering it if I was GWS. Yeah, I'm yeah, like. I mean, I'm in the same bracket because suddenly it's almost like if your premiership window's mm. sharp, which it has almost yeah. looks like, you then yeah. probably start wondering who's how's the rebuild yeah. going to go. The, but sure, you don't yeah. know. He could do a dimmer hard week, miss finals, and then just take them to yeah. the flag again. Yeah. So. So a weird one. Like, I agree with the argument where people sort of say you've got to give coaches a chance, but at the same time, like, there's only 18 AFL coaching jobs. There's a lot of great coaching talent. Like, If you're not doing excellently, there's plenty of other people who are worthy of a position, even if you are too. Like, a pass isn't good enough. You've got to be yeah. top sort of yeah. standard. Like, so if Fair you're enough. not able to do that, there's plenty of talent that deserves an opportunity, I think. I'm saying that we might have been extremely harsh on them in here, but they could also just do a Robert Walls to us and play finals yeah. with the flag. So <laughs> yeah, they're definitely that talented. Yeah, they're definitely it. that talented. Uh, p- my personal position as a final note is window still open. Yeah, but this year might not be the year it comes back straight away. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes that happens. So yep. Hawthorne, yeah, team that tried to avoid a rebuild by trading for all the mature talent in the world over the last few years. I'm thinking Tommy Mitchell, Jager O'Meara, Chad yeah. Wingard, all off the top of my head. Um, and they've just plonked themselves in the bottom four anyway and now have to re- rebuild through the draft to some extent. Yep. Um, they took uh, Granger Barras early, which yep. is probably something they needed in the draft yep. last year, a tall key back I think it was their first top 10 pick since Ruffy. Uh, yeah, yeah, that would be the case because Will Day was the, one of their earliest picks and he was like pick 12 the, or 11 the year before. So, yeah, you're right, um, a rare early pick. So add insults to injury for them as well. James Sicily's done his ACL. Probably not going to feature too heavily this year. Probably yeah. one of their best players, you would, yeah. you'd have to say, I think. Um, really, really good uh, young defender. Uh, they're strong through the midfield in terms of the players I just mentioned. Mitchell, O'Meara, yeah. Warple, Wingard. Um, so that, that line is good and they're, they're all mature generally. Warple, not super mature, but he just plays like he's a, a mature, mature man. Body. Yeah, exactly right. So um, th- there's a lot of talent in that top midfield but yeah. then I think the depth falls away really quickly for the Hawthorne yeah. I think my issue with that midfield is you've got Mitchell O'Meara and Warple who are all very similar players yeah. and it's similar to that Adelaide 2017 grand final midfield where it's Sloan and the sure. two Crash brothers so they and the thing that's concerning for me is I think Wingard's out now with a calf Gunston's yeah. got an injured back Mitchell's got a shoulder Sisley's also done his ACL which mm. we've already alluded to and yeah. Scrimshaw's done an A so 
Look, oh, I think they're going to be bottom three on the ladder, and I think this is now the start of their rebuild. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the question I was going to ask is, looking at the list as it is, the the, the players they've traded in for, yeah. what do you do with their list? So yeah. would you continue to rebuild and give the opportunity to yeah, those kids? I think I, I think it's kind of at that point, I th- isn't I it? I think also sometimes the worst thing that can happen to you when you're in that ninth to 12th range is you're really in no man's land because mm. you're not playing finals, but you're not terrible enough to be winning a wooden spoon yeah getting good draft picks yeah they call that purgatory in the NBA like that weird sort of like even if you're early playoff season in the NBA you're just going to lose the first round so suddenly in a way it's almost like it's a going back to Adelaide I know it's gone back quite a bit but it's almost like the best thing to happen is if you just bottom out because then that way you can get everyone aligned to where you're at Mm. all your development coaches are aligned your board's aligned so they're not going to come out and speak we expect to play finals in two years' time when it like might... Like North Melbourne. <laughs> yes. So, um, look, I think for Hawthorne, as long as they get everyone off-field aligned to make their on-field aligned, that's probably the big thing. And then probably just seeing the young players taking the next step forward, like, even though it's not young, but Impey coming back from a knee, I think that's going to be a big in. You've yeah. got Brockman, who could be on a half-forward flank. Because the other thing as well is, it's, this is definitely Sean Bergwijn's last year, in my opinion. It's got to be. I think <laughs> I, it's almost like he's going to have the farewell year, like what Dwayne Wade and Kobe Bryant had. Yeah. In the Even Gabs, Gablet a bit. He sort of yeah. had the farewell Rona. tour. He didn't mm. get it as well as he could have because of Rona, obviously, but yeah. he sort of got a bit of that. Mm. Yeah, that's true. What are, you, what are your instincts around Hawthorne this year? Oh, like in terms of like bliss management sort of Yeah, thing? what would you well, do? Is it anything different to what I've sort of. Say? I've got the fourth. I think they've moved on enough veteran guys now, like your Isaac Smiths, those sort of dudes, where they've just sort of let them go for cheap. Like I think you want to keep those sort of guys from the last year, so they can sort of teach the young kids in a newer sort of modern, well not modern, but mm. in the new version of Hawthorne's greatness, teach them lessons from their old sort of greatness. Like so, you want to keep those guys around, instilling those values in the kids. Yeah. And at like this point, you just want to accumulate picks for guys that want to leave. Like you don't want to like force guys out the door like they sort of have. You want to encourage people to keep, but if they really do want to leave, get picks for them. Yeah. And beyond that, keep your own picks, keep bringing in the kids, because they're at that sort of point where they're going to need a bit of turnover. Yeah. And kids is the best way to sort of do it well. And don't underestimate Sam Mitchell's influence mm. in that group. I think he's their Box Hill coach. Did yeah, I could be wrong. Right. Yeah, yeah, I think it's sure. Box Hill. He's yeah, their yeah. reserves coach. Yeah, yeah. so he, I think his yeah. influence over that group is going to be massive. He's got to be the next coach at yeah. Hawthorne, you'd think. Yeah. Um, are we all saying bottom four then? I think you yeah. said bottom three. I think I'll, I'll say bottom four for Hawthorne. Uh, I'm going to say that? bottom six. I think they can still sort of yeah. have enough to just sort of flow, languish in like 12 maybe, but lower probably more like 14. Uh, They've maybe. got West Coast at the MCG this year, so there's one guaranteed win. <laughs> um, we always lose to them there, regardless of ladder position. We'll move on to the North Melbourne Footy Club as a big, hairy, rampant dog tries to break into True Footy headquarters. <laughs> um, they're clearly in the middle of a rebuild as well. Yeah, this so is North Melbourne. North Melbourne, yep. sorry. Yep, yep. yep. Um, finished uh, second last this year um, and uh, picked up Will Phillips in the draft. I was just trying to recall who they took. Um, that was a bit of a curveball, if memory serves. Yes. Yeah. So I in- think if you look at the live stream, all of us like. Yeah, that was the first surprise. That's yeah. right, yeah. Um, but not, not a silly pick by any means. Um, they're a funny one to peg because obviously they had a bit of drama with Ree Shaw stepping down last yeah. minute uh, unexpectedly uh, to unfortunate personal circumstances, mental health reasons and stuff like that. Something you he's can't really plan for. He's taken an assistant gig up in Gold Coast now, hasn't he, Ray Shaw? Yeah. Has he? Yeah. yeah, he's up there. I thought he stood down from coaching. That's... Well, good on him. Yeah. That's good. No, no, just... It's yeah, more of a develop- I think they brought him up there in a development role for the young okay. kids. Yeah. So yeah, bit, I think he's more there in a part-time role. Yeah, I think fair that's enough. what it sounds like. More okay. background rather than front and centre head coach sort of role, I think. Good on him. That's uh, that's a really good sign. Um, I guess the, in terms of for football context, though, it's kind of left North in a bit of a lurch because I think he was actually the one who oversaw 10 or 11 delistings. Um, yeah. And that might have included Ben Brown and Sean Higgins moving on yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, so guys like, I think, Jamie McMillan, uh, Jasper Pittard, Ben Jacobs, fairly yeah. senior players. Marley Williams as well. Uh, Marley Williams, yeah. So um, was Pitt out in the leadership group as well. So I think there were, I one think of them McMillan was. was. McMillan was. That's right. I got it mixed up. Uh, anyway, He's now so in there for the operation. So. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, a lot of experience moved. There's a clear list strategy there. Yep. Then they've recruited David Noble as the new coach, and then set in the target of top four in three years. I think it was. <laughs> yeah, that was the whoever that's what I thought, whoever that board person was that said that they just they need to reevaluate yeah, where their yeah. club is at. Um, who uh, who was it at Richmond that 
boldly said that they would have three flags by 2020 when they were at the bottom. Brendan though. Gale. Thank you. But the, the name Oscar, I think that was when he said in 10 years' time, not within two years. So that oh, point, you could allow Good a bit point. of time to develop. Good point. It. Yeah, still massively amazing call, but oh, we'll, yeah. we'll say that for another time. Um, yeah, so they've, they've kind of put a target on <laughs> Noble's back already, like they've given him a bit of a certain death sentence. Because I don't know about you guys, but I just don't see North Melbourne finishing top three, uh, top four in three years. I no. think. No, no, definitely I, not. Yeah, yeah, I think this like they're going all right. I, I personally have talked about it before. Ben Brown going for cheap. It's not what I would have done. No, nah. I don't think they got enough out of that deal to justify trading one of the best players after you know a pretty. Um, one bad year considering yeah and it was two, injury effect three previous years because I think like he kicked 60 goals the last contender. three seasons yeah. 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 only player to most goals over the last three years or whatever it was prior to yeah. the last season I think something and, like that and say what you want about like I know the North fans are saying Ben like he's got a bit of a wooden back a bit one dimensional Ben Brown yeah. they're not a huge fan of him but if he's churning out goals, goals. like that like yeah. Yeah. Well, it doesn't make sense the thing is sense. like if he's just the target it then allows guys like Nick Larkey to become mm. more dangerous Cameron Zerha to become yeah. more dangerous so it was an odd one. I've actually got them winning the spoon this year. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've, I'm not as excited by them as other teams. I think there's a few exciting individual talents there. I really like Davies Uniac. I think yeah. I think people will be surprised how good he becomes personally. Yeah. Um, I'm just quite bullish on him. I, I'm a big fan of Jaden Stevenson as well, yeah. who they've just recruited. They want to turn him into an inside mid, I read. Uh, but they do say that about every single player. I remember they used to say that about Jack Darling. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it just doesn't work out. But uh, I love Josh Simkin. I think yeah, he's Simkin's a great player. player of the comp. Yeah, yeah, so they have got some exciting talent, but it's probably more for them now. It's those young role players that mm. are stepping up and probably you want to see that next wave come through. And 100%. as I probably alluded to before, with some bottom teams, you want to see the consistent and the sustainable brand of football that they're yep. going to play. But... Yeah, I still don't have them top four in three years' time. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's a it's a long way up. Um, bottom two for me. You have Wooden Spoon. Yeah. What do you think about North Bush? Yeah, definite bottom four lock. Yeah, probably closer to bottom two, if not the spoon. Yeah, but bottom four lock. I'd sort of I think, reasonably confidently say. I think. I think I thought they underachieved last year. Bottom two probably was a bit below what I thought their actual list quality was yeah. now that they've shed all those experienced players yeah. clearly well, just trying to redo it the 10 11 players you could see it um, probably winning enough games 13 14 yeah. sort of thing but exactly that purgatory area we were talking yeah. about before yeah in some ways it might have been the best thing for them because they just go right we're going to start the rebuild now yeah and then that way even though if my fans are going oh shit we're losing we're winning mm. this bone it then probably helps you because then everyone starts getting aligned everyone yep. starts understanding where you're at because the worst thing is when you just say, oh, we've got a list that can play finals and then you finish bottom two. Yeah, yeah. Because then suddenly the fail. <laughs> there's, you're expecting it there and you're down there, whereas when you're more there, it's doable. Yeah, I agree. Um, I don't know how much more there is to say about North Melbourne. I think there's there's exciting talent there. Um, it's just going to happen in flashes this year. Yeah. Uh, they're going to peg a few unlikely wins, as they always do. They're a competitive yeah. club. Um but, yeah, ultimately, similar to where they finished yeah. last year. Yeah, look, they probably did shed too much talent, like like experience or talent, but I don't think it's going to hurt them like long-term. Like, a couple of good drafts, because they're going to be drafting high, like, keep a full hand of draft picks. Like, I think they'll be right back in the finals frame in a few years. Yep. With a couple of good drafts, like, where they bring in two, three good kids a year for a few years. Yeah. I think they'll be right. Yep, well said. Um, we'll move on to the Demons, uh, who recovered ground after a disastrous 2019. So, obviously, yeah. prelim 2018. Um, how did that go? Not great for him, I yeah. think. No, that I was a great I've day. Been, <laughs> I've been, I've been, I've been, been, been happy at, after the first quarter, weren't you? Oh, that was one of the best footballing days of my life. But that's not what we're here to talk about. <laughs> um, yeah, so, no, 2018 uh, saw them... Sorry, 2019 saw them... Uh, Completely bottom out. Yeah, it was quite tragic but what I happened th- to them. I think, before then, people don't realise it, I think... 18 or oh, sorry 16 of their best 22 yep. all had major off-season surgery so they were yep. always going to start from the back in fact as soon as i read that i just went yep they're in for hell yeah <laughs> exactly and they're on top of that what also happens is even if those players tend to come back by mid-season the confidence is completely shot within yeah. the club like it's hard you to just, just come back as well halfway for the year they were in games but they were just like no. yeah yeah the fitness bases were low and if you don't have a strong culture as to begin with because yeah. melbourne obviously coming back from in terms of where they were under the dean bailey mark neil oh, era God, um, 
it's not a it's not a winning culture. So when things turn to shit, you can see why yeah. they don't recover so quick. So but anyway, not to heap shit on Melbourne because they did recover ground to an acceptable level, I would say, in twenty nineteen. They finished yeah. ninth, I well, think. Well, I think they actually had a positive win loss record. Right. But it was yeah. just there were teams that might have had better percentage. So Yes. They actually did have a very good year last year. Yeah. And look, Stephen May, I thought was very stiff not to make all Australian. Mm. So, you know, they've got quite a number of good players in there that I uh, can take uh, the next steps for them. Um, Petrarca had yeah, an amazing season yeah. as well. I think the big thing for them is getting that midfield mix right. You know, mm. Gorn's obviously your starting rock. Petrarca's your star. But then it's more like, does Petrarca, Bershaw, Oliver, Viney, Harms, they're all similar players. They're all inside balls. So even, mm. maybe even allowing someone like a Cozzy Pickett just to have a little five-minute burst every quarter. Yeah, just true. To offer them something different. But... Oh, look, they could play finals this year, but I think they're a bit like Freo, where 2022 is the big year for finals. Interesting. Yes, I like that. Um, they've also recruited Ben Brown, the player we just yeah. talked about a little bit, a um, bit of a goal machine. So he yeah. does add something different to Melbourne there. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, once they sort out further down the ground, that will impact, you know, how big a year Ben Brown has. Uh, he's out at the moment, I believe. He's had an injury, so... I'm not across these injuries. Yeah. You guys have yeah. about five surprise injury news. Yeah. <laughs> it's a I think, yeah, head. I think that's reasonably serious too, this oh, Ben okay. Brown injury, yeah. Okay, well, that just shits all over my point. Sorry, Melbourne fans. <laughs> um, I actually still think they will play finals. Yeah. Um, I've pegged them as nice. playing finals. I like I've it. I've pegged them. Um, <laughs> I like it. A good other question, though. Does, does Simon Goodwin start this year under more pressure than any other coach? I sort of thought yes initially, but I've kind of backflipped since our Leon Cameron discussion. <laughs> a bit. But like, cause my initial thought was sort of Ken Hinckley's out of the hot spot where he was out with yeah. Port. He was the You'd obvious hope one. So before. when you finish yeah. top, <laughs> and then yeah, I, I, and then I sort of initially thought that Leon Cameron had probably scraped enough goodwill to sort of just be a bit ahead of where Goodwin is. Yeah. But then I've sort of thought about it from the other way. Goodwin hasn't had nearly as much of an opportunity, to, like a long run at it compared to Cameron. So. Mm. Maybe 1A, 1B, those two. I think it depends on the year they have. Because if it's similar to last year where they have a positive win-loss record, but they just miss finals, it's like, well, you can actually see that they're still on the right path and they're playing an exciting brand of football. But it's like if they have a 2019 year Mm. where they just drop away, that's when you're going, ah, shit. Yeah, that's right. I I guess the way I see it is that Mel Goodwin dealt with a, a... bigger drop and has had longer to deal with it than Cameron so I actually think Goodwin is under more pressure in terms of if they don't play finals this year I'm not, I'm not I won't say if they finish ninth he'll get sacked but um, it's more if they finish 13th 14th yeah, like yeah then yeah. he's gone no, I, I, yeah. agree with that. I think a non-football factor as well that would tip Goodwin over Liam Cameron for the, like, the pressures the Melbourne like microscope to football compared to Western Sydney but yeah probably not yeah. as on top of their football compared to passionate Victorian Melbourne fans. Yeah, I suppose the local news in Sydney is not going to yeah, really like, get on Cameron's case and put pressure on GWS. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Compared to, to the extent. Melbourne like microscope of football media yeah. and everything. like The Melbourne micro penis. That's very true. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so I guess I, the last question I had with Melbourne was, is this list ready to contend? Because it's a team that's gone through a rebuild, dipped, yep. and then gone back up. Do you think there's any other in terms of talent they need to add or do you think the list is there it just needs time I think um, oh, I think they've got the team to contend yeah. but I think I said uh, just moments ago I reckon there's about 14 to 15 teams that yeah. can honestly contend for finals so play. Um, and look unfortunately 15 doesn't go into 8 so but <laughs> look um, I've got them finishing anywhere between 6th and 11th yes okay Fair enough. Uh, with finals or no? Sort of in terms of the contender recruit sort of thing, I've sort of gone like it's sort of hard to say where they can upgrade their roster beyond maybe like another key forward. Like they've still got like good mm. spread of talent, like a lot of great midfield talent. Like well, if Wiedemann takes the next step forward, True. suddenly yeah. that... Forgot about Wiedemann actually. Because yeah. Yeah. I've also sort of got here as well, like they're relatively young as well, so there's still that potential for internal growth to sort of catapult them back in the finals contention. Yeah. And you sort of saw that a bit in 19, well like last season rather, sorry. And you'll probably continue to see that a bit this year, that internal growth from the kids. Gross. <laughs> We've got um, Port Adelaide next, yeah. uh, who were obviously one of the shock teams of 2020. Yeah. Uh, before that, kind of an inconsistent team where you thought, this team could be, be doing better than they are. They should be regularly playing finals, but they were just pretty much around the yeah. mark. Then they went 14-3 and three in a 17-game season, which is a ridiculous record. Um, obviously, uh, hello. Um, <laughs> we... Yeah, we saw them become ultra consistent when previously that consistency was never there. And Ken Hinckley, like you said, has the pressure entirely off him. Heartbreaking loss at home in a prelim to the Tigers, who 
ultimately went on to win the flag and clearly the best team. So not not too disheartening. Um, to what extent, I guess, did you think, Lenny, that last year may have been a false dawn? I know it's harsh on yeah. Port Adelaide yeah. fans, but they are an up and down team. Yeah. What, what um, I think they're still good. I think they've got a very nice balanced team. So mm. I, I mean, like across the whole park, they're all balanced. Like you don't, you're not going. Their defense is right up there. Their forward yep. there. Your midfield's there, and it's all juggling up and down. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also like their depth. I think that that's that's what separates the real contenders from the the fifth to eighth bracket or the mm-hmm. sixth to eleventh bracket is your depth. Um, I think Semi Pell Pepper's going to have a breakout year. Mm. I think he's shown enough glimpses, but I think he's going to put together a very, very good year. He came along pretty well last year, didn't he? Yeah. After like some up and down form before yeah, that. Yeah, so um, I, I I think um, he's in for a big year. Yeah. Where do you see it, Bush? I, I'm going to compare them to like that 2013 to 2015 Fremantle, not in terms of like the way their list built or anything like that, in terms of how they're sort of going to go. I think they're going to be like that team that's well structured, well set up to contend, but for whatever reason each year gets close but doesn't quite sure. seal the deal. I think they'll be in the thick of it for a few years though. They've set themselves up well to have a good extended assault. But I think they'll just be unlucky and not have it all click one year. Is it flag. illegal to punch dogs? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm thinking kidding. about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, RSPCA, please don't ring us up. <laughs> That's a joke. Um, yes, no, fair enough. I, I think that one thing that could happen with Port, I think there's almost an urgency to, to win one pretty soon. Because I can see them going back before they then improve again. The reason is that because a lot of their best players are in the twilight of their career. I know Travis Boak, career best form at yeah. 31, 32. I don't even know how old he is. He's over 30, though. 20,000. Something like that. One I didn't realise, though, Brad Ebert's retired because of concussion issues. I yes. didn't realise that. Like, yeah. I saw a thing on the news last night where him and Pav were talking about a new concussion initiative. Yeah, I think he retired straight after the prelim. Yeah, I didn't yeah. realise, eh? Well, yeah. I, think, I think when you saw the way he got up, yeah. it yeah. was actually... It was actually frightening. Yeah. Because, like, you know, when you see a concussion, it's usually, oh, they go off, it's fine. But this one, it was like his eyes were in the back of his head. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was really swaying. Yeah. 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 It almost just looked like he was that bloke that had way too many beers at the pub, got knocked out, and he was just walking out and didn't know where he was going. But it was pretty sad. His final act was, like, quite a desperate sort of defensive spoils. Yeah. Um, Yeah. yeah. Former Eagle as well, so I have a spot in my heart for Brad Ebert. Um, But, yeah, I mean, like, Travis Bokes, your Charlie Dixons, um, the West Ops retired. Robbie Gray. Exactly. So. When they lose these guys, I think there could be a little bit of a hit. But yeah. equally, I think the talent that they have on their list... I think their young yeah. talent's quite exciting. Like, yeah. Zach Butters is almost the perfect replacement uh, yeah. for a Robbie Gray. Mm-hmm. Also, um, you got Xavier Dersmer on the wing, who I think is actually the best of their young talent. Yeah. That's just yeah, my opinion. Yeah, I've And um, obviously, Connor Rosie is one of the most exciting talents in the game. So. Yeah, Georgiatis as well yeah. is a player that's coming through the ranks. And we haven't even seen players like Bergman, who was yeah. with their first rounder, like, yeah, year before last. Ago. Yeah, yeah, so... Um, and then... Who do they pick up? Uh, Jones in the draft yeah. this year. So they're actually adding to this t- list that's sort yeah. of in contention. So, yeah. Um, yeah, no, they're in a really good spot. I have them, I think in my prediction, I had them fifth, but to be honest, I could justify them anywhere between fifth and first. Yeah. I, think they're, um, I think they're in contention. I'm pretty much in the same bracket as you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, cool. Same as you? Yeah. Cool. All right, we'll move on to Richmond, the team that broke their hearts. Um, every year, they finish the year strongly yep. um, and at the start of every following season we're like oh they're not they're not that good anymore that's fine and then they're getting b- belted by the Saints and we're like finally who's going to be the heir apparent but evidently uh, Richmond just timed their season so well yep. um, not too much more we can add to that because Richmond are just a champion team we covered it so much over the off season um, I guess the question on Richmond is who is their biggest or who or what is their biggest threat in the same way we asked about Geelong so um, ironically probably Geelong's their biggest yeah, threat okay. yeah um, that's what I had Geelong you've got Geelong uh, it's a bit like what Bush said before like you got Brisbane Port on their days they could win like Port pushed them in the prelim mm. um, depends on the young players coming in you know like following in the footsteps of guys like Liam Baker uh, Shea Bolton um, Short Bolter you know, Nash, Ross, Arts, Collier, Dawkins, Dow, Coleman, Jones, Garthwaite, Miller. You know, does Stack repay the faith for them, mm. showing the faith in him? When he gets out of jail. Yeah. <laughs> Their depth players, you know, McIntosh, Caddy, who didn't even play in the grand final, mm. but probably walks into most teams' best 22s. Yeah. If Pickett reclaims his best form. Um, the big question is, how did they handle being hunted and not the hunter? Yeah. 
Because they kind of, yeah, they almost allow themselves to stop being the hunted and then it motivates them to come hard at the end yeah. of the season. I I think the other threat for them, probably the mental side of it. So yeah. how do you motivate yourself after you've just won three out of four flags, been yeah. at the top of your game for so long? They might come out and smash well, it. But The thing is, another factor I thought of as well is the MCG factor. Like Especially if there's mm. a degree of crowds and stuff this year, that will motivate them because they didn't get to play at the MCG at all really last yeah. year because yeah. of the Victorian lockdown that they leave the state. Yeah. So this year they might have a relatively normal schedule, majority of their games at the MCG. Yeah. Relatively normal crowds, that'd be... For sure. Another favour pushing in their favour, the I think. Though, is you'd almost just, if you're a dimmer, I'd be saying, well, do you want to just stop at three out of four flags or do you want to go to three peat and be like, yeah, you know, Hall for Brisbane, I think. Collingwood in the early 2000s who did the four peat? Uh, in the early 2000s, Collingwood? Sorry, not early 2000s. Uh, early do you mean 1900s? F- yeah. Like yeah, the only yeah. time to have done a four peat. Yeah, was, was he, I had the 50s in my head, but I, I might be wrong on that. But yeah, yeah but you're right. Yeah, yeah. no. So. Do you want to we were born. Yes. <laughs> yeah. in a past life? Um, yeah, yeah. So do, do they want to really entrench themselves? And then do you just try and give Dust even more motivation to try and become a bigger or the greatest yeah. finals player of all time in any sport? So It's true. I think, I mean, I, personally, I think if they win the flag this year and get the three-peat and it's four out of five, then that would elevate them over Geelong and Hawthorne and Brisbane, yeah. personally. So they would become yeah. the greatest team of the modern era um, yeah. since probably that Collingwood team. Yeah. Um, I don't know how to compare them against the Hawthorne team of the 80s, but I think yeah. they won five flags within that decade. But yeah. uh, anyway, there's a lot of legacy on the line here. So, But uh, again, it's hard to be at the top for so long. Yeah. So that is the other threat for Richmond. Um, I don't think they're the most talented list in the game, but no, I don't no. think they were... At, well, it's I don't think they've ever been uh, most yeah. talented. Off the top it's, of my head, I can't say for apart, sure. But. Apart from 2018 when West Coast won the flag. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's true. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah. So, like, long story short, talent's not the thing that threatens it's them. It's just like their own that execution. It's kind of line point we made earlier. Like, system guys that just do their job. Like, mm. they're not necessarily the most talented footballers, but they're there to do a job and they do that particular job well. Like, yeah. Because when you look at that list, their real only A-plus grader is Dusty. Yeah. And the rest are yeah. probably like your A's and your B plus players. You, uh, Grimes maybe on his Grimes day. Grimes would be your A grader. Yeah, I'm not sure if he's A plus, but oh, a, I see what a. you're saying. Sorry, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, um, particularly in that midfield, Prestia and Cochin are probably two and three, um, mm-hmm. and they're good players. But yeah. if you Tom compare, Hinge. yeah, but I'm oh, sorry, in that midfield though, yeah, like, midfield. but you compare it to the other elite midfields competing for those top yeah. four, and you think that Richmond team on paper isn't better, but somehow it is still better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's weird. Um, uh, where do we where do we think they finish? Uh, I mean, I reckon they're winning the flag. To okay. be honest, yeah. Uh, what about you? Top two. I've fairly more that jazz at a minimum, probably the grandy. Yeah. I, oh, the other threat I will say actually is um, this year they smashed it by winning, oh, winning an away prelim. Mm. But if they don't finish top two again, what are the chances they play Brisbane away yeah. in an away prelim? I think that's the, that's a threat for them. Um, mm. They've proven they can beat Brisbane, yeah. but that's that's probably where I could see getting unstuck for them. Yeah. If they play the whole season at the G, it's di- I'm sorry, the whole finals at the G, that's different. But yeah. yeah, not finishing top two and having to beat Brisbane away, that's yeah. that's one scenario. So I, I think that's actually what I'm going to predict. I'm going to say Richmond fall, um, fall down at the second last hurdle in the prelim. Okay. Um, I like it. Boise. Very specific. Yeah, it is. Boise, Boise <laughs> yeah. take. Um, we'll go with the Sydney right. Swans here, um, who, again, are another rebuilding team. Um Again, yeah. rebuilding is not really in their nature. They've been yeah. a competitive team for so long, but they had to sort of give in. Um, lost a lot of experience over the last couple of years. Uh, in particular, Buddy, Rampy, Heaney and Hewitt are players I've written down are really important that they've missed heaps of footy last year. So yeah. there's plenty of reason for them to improve. Um, yeah. but, and, the, you know, the, the talent on the list is obvious as well. Uh, they've been... I'd, I'd almost argue they're coming to the end of their rebuild, uh, having yeah. just added some elite talent in um, Campbell and McDonald in the draft. I yep. think they're just about ready to go. Yeah. Um, in terms of the latter position, how much does Buddy's availability influence where you would rank Sydney? So him uh, not playing much versus him playing the entire season? Uh, well, if, if he plays the entire season, they're more likely to play finals. Do you reckon? I, know, I know that probably sounds, you know, like an adieu thing to say. <laughs> but, like, you know, if I were them, I'd probably plan for without Buddy for a majority of the season. Yeah. And then, like, it's almost like if he does play... Jesus Christ, what a bonus. But, yeah, yeah. you know, it's probably now more on guys like Heaney, Mills, Papley, McCartan, Haywood, Florent, Rowbottom, Blakey, Stevens, and Bell to take the next step forward. Mm. You know, I think 
in particular Isaac yeah. Heaney because he's probably been that player that's just shown glimpses I think last year in the first round he kicked five goals against Adelaide yeah four or five four I think it's four, four but yeah, four, yeah four or five yeah, elite and, performance um, you know, does he then start to become, you know, that best hybrid forward mid in the comp? Or not best, but, you know, mm. in that discussion. So, yeah. look, I don't have them playing finals, but if they do, I'm not surprised. Interesting. Yeah, okay. Um, for me, I think they'll miss finals either way, as yeah. good as Buddy is. Um, I think they're just a little bit too raw in the middle of the ground. But I do think the team that they've got now, like I said about Carlton a year or two ago, it's yeah. just about ready to go. Yeah. It's just about get like consolidating that with experience. Yeah. So... And limiting injuries. Yeah, that's it. But which, you know, we can't really bet on Buddy playing football, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. He's not guaranteed to play another game. That's how, yeah. like, fragile he is. Yeah. I'm gonna, oh, sorry. sorry, you finished. I was just going to say, I think yeah. I think bottom four for Sydney. What about yeah. you? Because I was going to say with the Buddy effect on projections, I, I think he doesn't really have enough in the tank, even if he is on the park consistently, to, like, impact the game as the Buddy we all know and love, yeah. as the mm. freak man he is. But I think even if he is still in the park, he should still just serve as a buffer for guys like McDonald, Blakey, Heaney, mm. Papley and Haywood in that forward line. So even if he isn't that buddy we all know and love from years past, he's still there and teams still sort of have to half acknowledge his potential and stuff, even if he's not as yeah. good as he could be. Yeah, interesting. So where do you think they'll finish? I think, yeah, probably maybe in that 12 to 16 range, I okay. think. Yeah, yeah. And in terms of like where they're at in their rebuild, I think they're in that finishing touches stage like okay. with the rebound. Like I think if they make the right couple of moves, like they don't even have to be major moves, like they make the right couple of moves with limited subtraction, they're going to be sitting pretty for the next six to ten years. Like They're going to be set up for sustained success. Like I, like what I said about Port, like where they'll be that team set up to be in the thick of it for a while, Sydney will be sort of set up in that position to have a sustained attack at winning a flag over five, six years. Well, five to ten year period. Yeah, I think re- retaining Tom Papley is one of the biggest wins in a oh, while yeah, as well because yeah. he's obviously a, one of their better players. Um, yeah. and then wanted to move to Carlton. Yeah, twenty or twelve months ago, eighteen months ago. Yeah, uh, keeping him was a huge plus and a huge um, endorsement, I guess, for the culture that they've sort of got going there as well, um, which is really good. We'll uh, have to zip through to St Kilda now, um, a team that surprised a few in twenty twenty with. Um, yeah. Much better injury run because I think the year previous they had one of the worst injury runs. 2020, they had a great injury run. Um, and we got to see what this team was capable of, added to by a number of recruits. Paddy Ryder and Marshall, I think, yeah. came together well at the end of the year. Yeah. Brad Hill, their biggest recruit, didn't really add too much. But then you got like Zach Jones, Dan Butler, um, yeah. guys who really added to that team. Dougal Howard, excuse me. They've, they've, con- sorry, they've continued that recruiting drive. Excuse me. Sure. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, that, I sort of shut him up good. Yeah, I think he was startled um, <laughs> What the hell was I talking about? <laughs> I actually don't know St yeah. Kilda, Saint Kilda no, They've continued that recruiting drive By adding Brad Crouch and Jack Higgins To yeah. pretty likely types um, yeah. to, And I think the midfield was one area they needed consolidating So, um, you know, on paper That's that's a really, really good off-season To a team that's yeah. really, really young and, and really, really experienced I guess, are they there yet To push for a flag? Um, and if not, Lenny, when is that time coming for them? Um, look, they've done obviously a lot right, but I don't think they're ready to crack the top four open. Yeah. I think they're just maybe a fraction behind uh, yeah. a few other teams. But 2022, 2023 is probably when they're going to be genuinely uh, contending. Um, mm. If they even just getting more finals experience into the group, like yeah. the Bulldogs winning the 2016 flag, that's just an anomaly like that mm. was so young I think they only played finals the year previous yeah 15, but um, yeah. you know they're young core to take them forward the guys that need big years are Brad Hill Hannibury and Wood yeah. in my opinion true yeah Hill, uh, Wood they've just recruited from North um, yeah. so yeah you're right uh, I've got a bit of an opportunity there Bush uh, what are you thinking about St Kilda well I think it's hard to see a reason why they don't make like finals again like I think they're still yeah. pretty comfortable but like the only way I can see them not making finals is if another team just has a better and healthier year compared to them. Like that's the only other way I can sort of see them missing finals. They've got that room for internal growth. They're still a pretty young group, and their recruits are in that right age group to maintain, if not improve, on the baselines they've sort of set for themselves. Yep, fair enough. I um I think they're probably a couple of years away. Um, I think one, like I really do 
respect their list and they expect the talent, respect the talent on it. Yep. One telling performance for me last year was when the Eagles travelled to play them against uh, at the Gabba. Yep. And the Eagles had probably the worst injury list in the comp at that point. Was um, this when they sure he was out? Yo, yeah, was out, McGovern. Gamnet, McGovern got injured. Yeah, and Gamnet, Kelly and Gaff ran them up. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. So I, th- I thought it was just. I don't get me wrong. It's hard. Every team has bad games throughout the yeah. season, so it's not a massive uh, indictment on St Kilda. But when finals were on the line for both of these teams. Two experienced like guns in the comp, Gaff and Kelly, just tore St. Kilda yeah. apart. And I just thought that was a real boys against men moment. Yeah. And that's just the edge that St. Kilda's lacking. I yeah. think I think they were a little bit exposed that night and the yeah. Eagles showed the gear that they have being an experienced team and unfortunately didn't yeah. couldn't prove it over the course of the season, went out in first week. But yeah. I just think that was a good indication of St Kilda just being needing a bit more time to develop yeah. that. So, but even when they played against Fremantle, they were six, seven goals mm-hmm. up. Oh yeah, quarter time. Yeah, we were up. We were down thirty six, I believe. Wasn't yeah, it? and yeah. then Fair ran over the top, and yeah. the fact they lost to North in round one. Same if, way. Yeah, yeah. So I think they just can't have those losses. I mean, yeah. If you have a loss when it's like I don't know ten points or something, and mm. it's a very close game, that's acceptable as much yeah. as you don't want to accept it it's acceptable but when you're six seven goals up you should really be winning a game yeah against a team that should not be playing finals so that's true and both of those teams miss finals i guess we did see a lot of improvement from the start of the year to the yeah. finish oh, season, Kilda, so there's absolutely. lots to take out for that yeah. um but yeah i'd say finals again for sure but yeah. probably elimination final potentially hosting so, elimination final and the semi, uh, that, and that's and the semi. Similar, saying, similar to this yeah. year yeah what about you bush same again yeah same sort of ballpark maybe win one finals game sort of thing yeah yeah but i think that would be a half, good yeah. result personally yeah, like i don't think there's any reason for st kilda to get uh to feel too much pressure with the way the the youth is aligned like they've got good young kids there's no yeah. reason to rush that i think yeah. i think a finals win would be a great result again yep Let's talk to them about my boys. Um, uh, a team that since they won the flag have missed out on finals narrowly, sorry, missed out on top four narrowly two years in a row. Uh, yeah. Ultimately, it cost the, the difference between the Eagles making top four last year and not was a, you could say, controversial touch ball against the Bulldogs where they ended up winning the game. We okay. It was the one where, I can't remember oh, who kicked Bont it. And Pelly was it was Bont and Pelly kicked it yeah. and it was, you could argue it was touch. I personally don't, mind the decision yeah but i think technically you could have argued it was touch anyway yeah. decided the game the eagles missed the yeah. final, top four by um by percentage or whatever it was um regardless i think fifth was a fair result for the eagles so i'm not yeah. not trying to big it up but it is important to remember even though that they went out first week at the finals collingwood were fantastic that night i think adam simpson said this beautifully you'd almost rather be bucks in that situation because you can use the motivation like we've been called the dirty pies yeah everyone says we're not going to win yeah we're going to get thumped let's go out let's prove it so mm-hmm. i think it was just an article we did with um on the afl website so it's well worth the read um but yeah and no, i agree with him because it's so hard to try and motivate when you're already being motivated by all the external noise mm. yes so, that's true yeah and i and that Colin, we're a good team and as well. to be honest West Coast and Collingwood have just the best finals rivalry. I mm. mean, they've had some absolute cracking games. Yeah, it was yeah arguably as good as in terms of quality as any other final that year. Yeah. I thought um, uh, maybe not the grand final, but I uh, just mean like it wasn't two teams that looked like they were making up the numbers. It was yeah. two teams like in an absolute war, and Collingwood yeah. were the better team of the night. Yeah. Ultimately, I don't think the Eagles were quite at the level of the top teams last year. Yeah. I think they were too inconsistent. They're four minutes the yeah. first hub. Yeah. The other way to look at that is. The fact that they went from that first hub and then nearly made the top four was quite yeah. amazing as well. Oh, yeah. um, sort of backtracking a little bit, I guess. How long does this group have to contend, Lenny, in your Fremantle supporting opinion with the composition yeah. of their list? Yes. Um, look, uh, this is probably the last genuine crack they've got at it. Yeah. But they can still contend in 22 and 23. But mm. I think it's, you know, when you've got guys like, I think... Hearn's 33, Kennedy's 33, Shuey's 30, Redden's 30, Nick Nat's 30. I think McGovern's just turned 29. Yeah, um, he's a year older than me, so yeah. 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 So, you know, Shepard's 29, who could be turning 30. So it's like, they are ageing, they're in that mm. ageing bracket. And yeah. for me, or in my opinion, I think it's, you're looking at guys like Josh Rotham to replace Schofield, Jack Waterman, if he can replace Kennedy. Um, I haven't included Oscar Allen and the young players need to step up because I think he's already at that uh, yeah, okay. elite level. You know, Alex Witherden to replace Jeddah. I know he is a new recruit. Um, Petrocelli to go on a wing. Um, Jared Cameron, who I think needs to step up. 
I said in here to replace Rioli, but there is big news today, Jesse. <laughs> yes, no, I'm stoked with that. So he could be a Willy Rioli, uh, for those who don't know, you should know, um, is confirmed he's allowed to come back August 20th of this year. Yep. So potential finals wild card. I do think he's... I was going to say, I, I remember thinking Rioli was better than Liam Ryan. The form Liam Ryan showed last year made me think otherwise. I'm thinking, wow, yeah. two amazing similar players. Well, that, that's probably where your forward line gets even more scary because yeah. it's, you've got to man up Kennedy, you've got to man up Darling, yeah. then you've got Ryan, then you've got Rioli. And that's, but that's why I think Jared Kevin and Jack Petrocelli, if they start stepping up, because Cripps, I think, is your crafty little small forward. He might mm. not kick you in the five goals. And, He's like pressure and tackling yeah. is his thing. Um, but even someone like Brandon Ainsworth to become a tagger that replaces that Hutchings role, True, who yep. I think had a very undervalued role in that grand final push. I don't know how highly you valued him in that game, I think. Yeah, I mean, any uh, any I great team often has a great tagger, and yeah. I think Hutchings was ours that year. I think Sidebottom had 40 touches in the first final, you guys? Something like that, yeah. And then he had a very limited yeah. number. Yes. So uh, he was big, but... You know, if those six boys, if they step up, then, you know, they're going to make my answer to is this, their last genuine crack at a flag look sure. silly. So. That's all right. Where, where do you think they're going to finish? I have actually got them sixth or seventh. Okay. It depends on the hubs. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think if we have to play a lot of Queensland football again, that will make it tough. What do you think yeah. about the Eagles? Like, for years left of the top, like, dep- def- I'll define top as sort of a team, but it's threatening top four. Like, that's, like, the top 25, aren't, like, 25-ish percent of the league, like top quarter, pushing top four. Okay. So I think they've probably got another three years, like just the way they are, like the way they're listed up, they can sort of push for top four the next three years. But I think with the right moves and like as some of those older guys retire, as Lenny alluded to, that'll open up some cap, which will help them make some shrewd recruitment moves, luring some WA guys home. You'll, that's always helpful with the war chest. As I've put it here, the war chest in Nisbet's Cavern of Doom. <laughs> but yeah, the Eagles He's have some cracking lines. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the Eagles have quite the war chest, obviously, especially once some of these guys retire and they free up some cap flexibility. So I think with the right moves and holding on to some draft picks and stuff, and even just they the can organic sort of, growth. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. Like they sort of can continue to be one of those perpetually good teams. Like the Eagles, since coming in the league, seventy percent of the time they make finals or whatever it is. Like yeah, they sort of set themselves up well to sort of not really bottom out. Yeah. So they're sort of close to the top or. Yeah, in the, right in the frame for the top. Yes, the right moves. My uh, rebuttal, I guess, to the the aging thing is that um, oh, there's no doubt that they're aging, but yeah. I don't think we rely too much on Josh Kennedy anymore, and I think yeah. Shannon Hearn has actually had a quite a poor year in 2020. So that's the way I'm consoling myself. Yeah, no. That I think with those two players leaving next year, I think Oscar Allen steps up to that role. Jake Waterman gets a more regular crack. I think there's still enough goal scoring power that we can oh, get absolutely. by. And down back again, I think Shannon Hearn was a bit down last year. Uh, an amazing player the year before that, but um, we're kind of already starting that transition. And yeah. I think jo- Josh Rotham's a player I'm a big fan of. Yeah. Shuey's the one I'm really worried about. Yeah. But again, I think he's actually in career best form almost. Uh, since about 2016 to now, he's yeah. still in career best form. So two to three years out of him. McGovern's still got three or four years yeah. probably. Uh, Nat Nui as well, barely yeah. played footy. So I am optimistic that the Eagles actually have a larger window than maybe people are giving them credit for. As, why do you keep hitting the light? <laughs> I don't know. It gets spinning, but he doesn't go where I want it to. For context, Busher is throwing a shoe at his dog who's on the other side of a screen, and he keeps hitting the lights. <laughs> um, it's actually incredible. Yeah. <laughs> the accuracy. Um, uh, yeah, but that being said, is this year the Eagles' year? I think I had them sixth. I think similar to the last couple of years. Probably good enough to finish top four, but will they... It's anyone's guess. I think they could win the flag. I don't think there's... Oh, I think they're in that group along with Port Adelaide that I alluded to. If they won the flag this year, I'd be like, that makes sense. Their list the is on their good day enough. sort of group. Yeah. yeah. Sort of but I mean, to. they haven't made top four in two years, so I look silly banging I'm home also, about them. But I'm also sweating on Elliot Yo because it's... Oh, yeah. Like he's got OP or something. Yeah. It sounds like he's going to miss it. Yeah, that's actually really it's, worth mentioning. No, he was probably... That's probably another reason why I'm a bit... I don't want to say I'm nervous that they're going to... I still think they're going to play finals. Yeah. I'm saying that right now. They're going to play finals, but mm. it just depends on injuries. Like, you know, because I think Yo is probably the most important mid. He was our catalyst in returning to form in 2020. When yeah. he started playing well, the team started playing well. So, yeah, I agree. Massive blow. So, we'll have yeah. to see what happens there. We'll move on to the Bulldogs before all of the batteries... Oh, you didn't want to go into the underachieving theme for the Eagles? For- uh, have they underachieved over the last two years? Yeah. Can do. Uh, I sort of had certainly in 2020 I think they should have either had that more comfortable ladder position that you alluded to or mm. at least iced the pies here at Optus yeah. in the first week of finals 
And then 29, I've forgotten how exactly that played out. Uh, lost in the lost final round to Hawthorne. Hawthorne. Yeah. yeah. I think we're a better team in yeah. 19, personally. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Look, yeah. I've... Short answer is yes. Long mm. answer is it's a very tough competition. It is a very mm. tough competition. That's a good answer, I think. I think the Eagles, yeah, good enough to finish top two to four. Yep. But you're right, so five other teams. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a good summary. We'll move on to the Bulldogs before everything dies. Um, I actually have caused a bit of a stir by rating the dogs down this year. They're, <laughs> they're my smoky to fall. Yeah. Um, Controversial considering they've just played finals two years in a row, then recruited Adam Trelaw yep. um, in and addition Stephen to Martin. Stephen Martin to help out uh, Team English and um, the forward. Um, Jamara? No, are talking they did take Jamara Ugo Hagen. Oh, no, they, yeah. so they recruited someone else. Mia, Mitch Hannon? Oh, yes, yes yeah. Yeah, that's right. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, no, they've definitely added to their list. My question to you, uh, first of you, Lenny, uh, I think I'll ask you as well because I don't remember <laughs> what you said. Um, Trelaw adding to that midfield, which is yeah. already a little bit overpopulated. Yes. Do you think? Do you foresee any issues for them there? How does he work yeah. into it? Oh, I do see some issues. Um, uh, you know, does Bontempelli play forward more? Mm-hmm. You know, Dunkley showed that he wanted to leave. Yeah. Well, I actually, if I was Bulldogs, I would have just said, "Yep, yeah, we'll take one top ten pick." Because mm-hmm. essentially, then you're not really giving up much for Jamara when yeah. they gave up a lot for him. Um, Trelaw coming in, does he play half back? Does he play on a wing? Because, you know, he's got the speed mm. to do it. Um, I also do wonder if their brand is sustainable and consistent. Um, I think in 16, they were able to, that week off between the regular season and the finals, I think, helped them massively. Good point. Um, but, yeah, I can say they're missing finals. Um, so I'm not in that camp that's going, Jesse, how do you not have them in the finals? Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I can see them missing finals. Interesting. Yeah. I think they're good enough to finish fifth or sixth at best. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're a team that hasn't finished t- top four even the year they won the flag. So yeah. it's, you know. It's a wide uh, range, I think. Yeah, them. that is. Um, again, goal scoring power is an issue as well. Yeah. Um, they've got Norton for sure, and he has mm-hmm. upside because he was, um, you know, a bit underdone in 2020 and, you know, one of the best young key forward talents in the comp, if not the best. Yep. Uh, but again, it's just about getting that mix. Is Bont playing forward the best use of his talent? Yeah. Um, Josh Dunkley playing on a flank, is that the best use of his talent? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see it really. What about you, Bush? In terms of the Trelaw fit, I think it's not as impressive as it sounds. Like, there's too much star power in that engine room with too similar effect. Like, it's already, like, you're seeing it with Dunkley already. Like, because recently like, he was publicly bagged out by, I think it was Bevo, publicly bagged him out for not being good enough and might miss round one and all this stuff. It's like, mm. so someone like that, like, you could have got rid of him last year for a top 10 pick, as Lenny yeah. alluded to. Now you're tanking his trade value. Like, yeah, it's a <laughs> bit stupid. Like, yeah. The sum of the parts doesn't really work out. Like, mm. yeah, even, like I can see why they slaughter did it because jo- uh, Collingwood were just up Ship Creek and selling Play cents on the Creek. dollar. Yeah, they're selling cents on the dollar. So you'd, mm. of course you're going to take Adam Trelaw for cents on the dollar, but that's true. The sum of the parts, I don't think it works out conducive to winning for that. So I also don't know where his second position is. Exactly yeah. right. He's not really a player with a clear second position at all. Um, so then you're moving Bont, who probably does have a second position yeah. into the forward line where, you know, I think he's better as a mid. Yeah. I actually made a big call. I did a video with um, the pair. Go check out his channel. It was AFL 2021 big calls. And I said that Bailey Smith would be the Bulldogs' best midfielder this year, assuming that Bont yep. moves forward. That was my big call. So, again... I, I like it. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I like think, it. I think they've got a lot of young talent there. Uh, I don't want to shit on the Bulldogs. Uh, we're... We're just trying to form a prediction here, and I had them missing the finals. They're certainly good enough to play finals. They're oh, a yeah. good, strong team, and yeah. Bontempelli is one of the best players in the comp on his day. Yeah. Um, so definitely a finals contender. I don't see them going all the way, but um, yeah. And I like them. I hope they don't yeah. shit the bed. No, I think they're like that cool. club that everyone loves because mm. they haven't had all the success, and they're not yeah. the real... They've never really been an arrogant club, even when no. they won the flag. Everyone yeah. loved their 16 flag. Yeah. Like, even neutral fans generally were like stoked uh, when they won You that. felt sorry for Sydney because basically 99% <laughs> yeah. of the football population, apart from Sydney, just all jumped on the yeah. Bulldogs bandwagon. Yeah, that's right. They're a bit of a, there's a Leicester City vibe about them. Leicester yeah. City famously won the 2016 Premier League um, against all odds, like yeah. 5,000 to 1 odds. Um, the yeah. Bulldogs, not on that same level of. Um, Underdogness, no one was, but uh, yeah, I think it was just one of those things where everyone was amazed by the footballing story. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, long story short, I think I, ha- I have the Bulldogs missing. W- what did you have them finishing? It's a wider range, like I alluded to. I'd sort of say that six to like 14, right? 
Yeah, it's a pretty okay. big sort of window. Probably that more is a likely, stanky window, but, but more likely to miss finals to make. But they're not a team that's above their inconsistency yeah. and you know those yeah. kind of issues as well. Yeah. So yeah, be good for a few hiccups. Even. Yeah. All right, we'll race through the final predictions of the video because I have no idea how long we've been talking and <laughs> everything's about to die. So um, we'll start off grand final. Yep. I'm going to say Brisbane and Collingwood. I like it. Who are you going? Richmond and Port. Like it. Rematch, Richmond, John. Yeah, I could see that happening too. Yep. Uh, premiers, I'd say Brisbane. Richmond. I'll go the Cats just for something different. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Brownlow medalist. I've gone for a stinky... Combo a, a draw. Oh, I like Ooh. it. Lockie Neal goes back to back. Oh, and Christian Petrarca wins enough games for Melbourne to to earn it with him. What about I'm, yourself? I'm going to go Cripper. Takes blows to the finals. Ooh, I like and it. And I reckon he's going to be a bit annoyed that he didn't win the 2019 and had yeah. a down year in 2020. And I True. think he's going to come back with a vengeance. I've got a spicy name. I've just thought of two seconds ago. Nathaniel Fife. <laughs> Not quite. Taylor Adams. Okay. Uh, Collingwood. Yeah. Yes. If that Collingwood have that big year and they rally, he will be a big pace. He's probably. The guy that will be their best midfielder now because like Pendlebury's getting older, he'll sort of happy mm. to be the more complimentary yep. great man that he is, Pendles. I rate that call, actually. Yeah. Tyler Adams is a good player. Yep. Uh, Coleman, I've gone Tommy Lynch, but not with any real confidence. What about yourself? Charlie Dixon. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go another smoky. <laughs> Matt Tabiner. <laughs> oh, jeez. I'm actually put that out there for Actually? Him. I'll say Tabiner. Does I'll he ever kidding. keep more than 33 or so goals in a year? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know me, I'm the first one to know. That is the smoky. Shit, but I'm just going to say he's... Figures it all out. Fair enough. And him and me sail off into the sunset together at the end of the Cute. season. Wow. Having made up. I think that's what's going to happen this year. <laughs> all right. Rising star. Um, the obvious one is Matty Rao. Yeah. But I'm going to nominate... Does Rao count? Yeah, yeah. he does. Okay. Didn't play enough games. Ugal Hagen is a sneaky chance as well. But you're the draft man. Who do you say? Uh, so apart from Matt Rao? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So if Rao's your first choice, yeah. who's yeah. your second? Denver Granger Barras. Ooh, okay. Yeah. It's, yeah. Feels Sicily's role on half back. Yeah, not, not often a key wins it, uh, since Hogan probably. Um, but yeah, no, I like it. It's a big call. I'm going to go with Logan McDonald, maybe. Okay. I could see him having a decent year, kicking a few goals, like decent like kick-ins from the Sydney midfield, giving him good like looks. Yeah. yeah. Questions with Buddy, like Blake, Blakey sort of still skinny and a bit gangly, like Logan's sort of more ability showed it, nearly winning the Waffle Coleman. Like, yeah. yeah. I think he's a guy that could win that rising star. With, but the way Jesse Hogan did over like a... Crips. Yeah, mm. exactly. I yep. think you could see something like that happening. Cool. I like it. Um, we will have to rush this conclusion, yep. uh, this outro. Um, that has been our 2021 predictions. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, Lenny, for joining us. No uh, you're becoming, thanks for having me again. That's all right. Becoming part of the furniture here. Yep. You're a regular. But um, people enjoy what you bring to the show, as do we. So uh, thank you so much. Busher, thanks for accommodating us. And um, please see to it that your dog is assassinated by the time <laughs> we come around next time. <laughs> I'm just joking. I love that big exuberant beast. There's no um, one home, so he's naturally going to give us a Yeah, no, nah, he's all right. Cool. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Make sure you subscribe to the True Footy YouTube channel. Uh, if you're not aware, we do, um, we're also on Spotify and uh, iTunes as well. If you prefer to listen to podcasts, but uh, we do appreciate the views on YouTube as well. So uh, I feel just, like just podcasts the good old fashioned way. Exactly. Make sure you check out our sponsors, Manscaped. Um, and, you know, we're going to see you throughout the uh, 2021 AFL season. Looking forward to a big year. So thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next one.